You're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. Good morning to everybody. To my right, it's about effing time. Jim Florentine in studio. Yes. We've only been trying to do this for, I don't know. Ten years. Ten years? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's long. Uh, <laughs> I've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> Just stupid. <laughs> like, you got two shows that, yes. Over the years, didn't really get along, but the people that are involved with those shows always got along. You know, we've always been uh, friends with Jim Florentine. Used to live with Norton for many, many years. These guys are solid friends. So, now you get to do our show. It was a little weird, you know, because, you know, Jim was on your show, I was on Howard's show, and we were living together. Yeah. And Jim got the sidekick job, and I was a regular on there, and it was like, there was some, you know... Stuff going on between the two shows, and we're just looking at each other like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting involved. Sounds like a late more compare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really was. <laughs> He's on one show, <laughs> <laughs> but we never brought it home to each other. Right? Yeah, we were respectful <laughs> like that. We didn't hold it against. Yeah, when each you guys other. were pulling trains and stuff, yeah. it never came up in conversation. Yeah, right? yeah. When Jim was pushing my cheeks, <laughs> <laughs> we never brought that up. Yeah, that's gotta be a tough spot for you guys to be in. Well, not really. Knowing that all that crap was going on, and you guys are, you know, it was a little weird. On opposite shows. Yeah, but I didn't really, you know, we didn't really know what was going on. I guess that stuff was before, you know, we both on your, you, you know, yeah, each but other. But we never, we never brought it up when I would see you, you know, at the no. the comedy clubs and stuff. You you were just always a, a good dude, man. Really funny dude. No, look, you know, you know, you guys took a like in the gym. So Jim's like, you know what? I got a good home here. And then, you know, they took a like in me over there. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to, I don't know what's going on in the background, but I'm cool here for a while and we'll see what happens. And then look, now we're one big happy family. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Took a long time. And sure. because of you, I, I met Robin, and she couldn't have been nicer. And I know you guys don't go out anymore, so maybe I shouldn't be bringing this up. But she was very cool. It should be stated today. No, absolutely. And then, uh, yeah, me, uh, we met Anthony, too. Yes, yes. And, uh, well, and his Anthony relationship and is, my relationship at the time. I, who would have thought? You know, yeah. we were both in relationships. That, and, that It would have been over pretty soon for both yeah, of us. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> We were, we were, we seemed so happy at the time. I know it was pictures of us all smiling, yes. like we're, right. we're all on our honeymoon and we're in the Bahamas. And... Yeah, that's what it was like. <laughs> and then, wow, <laughs> came apart at the seams. You are a brave man, though, because uh, you started dating Robin. I'm thinking to myself, wow, if this relationship goes bad, he's blowing up his spot with Howard. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, there was risk, but I didn't, I didn't care, man. <laughs> It was like, she was cool. I asked her out on the air as a goof. I didn't think she was going to say yes. I'd never had the balls to do it off the air. Yeah. There's no way. And she's like, all right, fine. I'll go to dinner with you. We were both single at the time. And, you know, we hung for a few months before, you know, mm -hmm. we're friends and stuff like that. Just feeling out. She knew about my reputation. I told all the stories on the show. <laughs> you know, she's like, what am I doing with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, come on. And I'm like, look, that's just the way I am. And <laughs> it was like, I'm like, that's why I was like, there's no way I could. Eat. Like, if I thought if I asked her off uh, off the air, I would get banned from the show because yeah. it would be so. I would put her on the spot. Like, are you kidding me? I'd never go out with you. Sure, but, but no, the, you know, it was cool. She's really cool. Yeah, I I, I, I can't say anything bad about her. Anymore. No, you know she what? She was, was very very cool. You know, it, when you're used to these little girls, there's just so much drama and just so much crap with it. Even though you know, yeah, yeah. I just needed someone at that time to just you know be a really cool chick. Bring no drama to the table, and, that, and that's what it was. So you're back to the little girls? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you miss them. I, I, miss, I miss getting texts 175 times yeah. a day. Uh, the terrible twos are fun, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I miss, I miss dropping her off, and a minute later I get a text, where you at? I'm like, I'm still in the driveway, all right? I didn't even pull out yet. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, there's definitely a, a price to pay for an ass like a snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, you have a Norton story that that we haven't heard yet? Because you guys live together. I want to hear a good Norton story today. I don't know because he's got some Norton dirt on. How descriptive? Can you can't really beat that? Well, story. yeah, obviously uh, something Norton would be okay with. I'm not trying to like. Oh no, you know, dude, come on! What, what, spot, what could be out there that hasn't been said about? That's him? true. Yeah, but yeah. the girl was faithful. <laughs> <laughs> Keep oh it God. under your hat. It's horrid. <laughs> well, I I just know like you know. He kept different hours than me. I would go to bed at like 2 or 3. Yeah. Jim would go to bed at like 9 in the morning. 
So I'd have to get him up at like 7 p.m. because not to miss his first spot. He's like, can you get me up at 7? I'm like, in the morning? He goes, no, at night. I'm like, oh, my God. God. I'm like, dude, you got to get your life together. <laughs> right. He, by the time I got up, Starbucks was closed. He was angry. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I go to bed at like 3, and the, t- the kitchen table is right near my bedroom. So this guy would get in at like 6 in the morning and just start eating potato chips like a maniac. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm they- trying to sleep. My head's like a foot <laughs> away from him. And I, I'm like, what is it? Is there a chipmunk in the kitchen? What? I'm pounding on the wall. He's like, sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. I was just I'm hungry. I'm starving. You know how it is. I haven't eaten all day. I'm like, all right, just go to go in the other room. There was an Exxon, and I would stop at the Exxon <laughs> and go to the Subway. And I thought I was eating healthy because I was eating Subway. I would eat two Subway sandwiches and then go to bed on Artie. Uh, what was? Oh God, Artie, not, not Artie Lang. Uh, Artie Fletcher. Artie Fletcher's old bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know Artie Fletcher. No. But- He's obese. Having somebody else's bed is. Yeah, just... I bought his bed for 200 bucks, and he lies a lot. He's like, that's ah, brand new. And I'm like, there's like coffee stains on it. I'm like, this yeah, isn't brand new. Coffee. Yeah, and that, guy, and that guy never wore a bag either, so. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the first time Jim was laying in someone else's bed. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Sure. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> you really were bad back then. Oh, I was so as, I was um... so well behaved on my like the freaking. You know, I moved in with Jim, and I was like, yeah. uh, I was thirty, and it was time to get out of my parents' house. Oof. And I was so well behaved, I was like, quiet for a while. And then you know, fast forward a month, I'm smoking in the living room. His girlfriend hates me. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we did cribs with your your old place that you guys lived in oh, together. With the mold and we, everything. Cribs was a popular show. Yeah. We did a few episodes ourselves, and we did uh, a Norton cribs, and you were living. with with him at the time i thought i lived in some s holes but that place wow it was brutal yeah. with you know, black mold where you guys what you, you frame pictures yeah we put cover, pictures over to the cover mold. up the black mold yeah i went to the english town auction in new jersey for like four bucks and bought these f- pictures that would cover a mold we yeah. put you know, tin foil on the wall to cover them all his bedroom was lined <laughs> with tin foil it was, it was so cre- it looked like he was trying to be fashionable <laughs> but he's just trying to stay alive it looked like aliens but yeah he was keeping the alien yeah. signals away but you know we paid it was like 800 bucks a, a two-bedroom for nice. 800 bucks nice right and i had my girlfriend living there so yeah. it was three of us splitting 800 bucks sweet we couldn't beat them we need to be in new york because we were trying to get into the clubs and all that stuff didn't they try mm-hmm. to like uh did they make that section eight housing or something like that like it, it went into some weird like uh like government housing after we left because the landlord lived below oh, us really? yeah, yeah yeah they did something with it. it was really it was a dump great now, he probably had to do that in order to uh refurbish it yeah that was just right. moldy and th- oh did you guys have bugs and other creatures we had some, yeah we had some silverfish yeah Oh, those things! I, I had those. Those things, and, and then, then all of a sudden, the Spanish. I'd rather see a cockroach than those things for some reason. Oh. They just say filth, yeah, the, <laughs> and the, moisture. I know, yeah. And then this new landlord took over, the Spanish dude, and as soon, w- within three days, we had roaches. <laughs> Did we have roaches? Yeah. Well, no, you 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 were just moving out at the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I probably yeah. just missed that. I probably missed the roaches. Silverfish. I, I never had roaches. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Isn't that nice? Now look at you, living in the lap of luxury. Yeah, I know. Now he's in Trump Tower. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 now he's got like a, sh- a shoe area. He was talking about it's, this It's morning. a designated shoe area. I, uh, you know how it is. You have to have a gentleman has to have a place to keep his shoes. And I'll, I'd like to meet area. a girl by there. I tell and him he's I'll bragging meet. about his California closets. Like, what happened to us? What? I have to have a nice place. You used to, to live with stuff. black mold. Yeah, yeah, I know. We had a living room. Silverfish. It, it had like that old door where it had that like big big keyhole yeah. so that's where we'd always bring chicks and we'd watch each other through the little keyhole <laughs> it's like psycho but it was because jim always has to pee you know him every five seconds so every time i'm watching it i'm starting to be like wow this is getting good i gotta go pee and i have to go run in my room <laughs> <Make hide. believe laughs> <you were> <laughs> and then, then, I, then if i wanted to watch florentine all i have to do is walk into the kitchen be three chicks laid out I'm like jesus christ what a great life you have <laughs> amazing <laughs> There's a there's a picture of the silverfish. We'll, oh, that's a good one. We'll yeah. put it up on O and A Radio. The place is infested with them though. That, that, they yeah. were disgusting. You ever find one in your bed? No, because they were always in the walls. But I remember at one point, oh. I think I count, count, counted after it would rain. It would. They'd be all over the place. I think I counted five or six on my wall at the same time. I was like oh. thirty two. I was doing comedy for, I guess, nine years at the time. You Eleven years not at the time. Be in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't feel guilty, but doing well. Oh, no. I was in a dump for a long time. A dump. Yeah, but it, it worked for us, man, because we used to have to drive yep. like an hour and a half to get back and forth in the city all the time. So we needed to be near there, and we're like, oh, who cares? With no money pressure, because you come in and do 20 I made $25 when I do a comedy store spot. So it was yeah. like we needed to be in a place where you could come in and do city spots without any financial pressure. It was, it was great. Yeah. It was perfect.
And I, w- I had one rule, no, no prostitutes in the house. <laughs> well, that's a good rule. You know what have. I mean? Because I was Jimmy. like, I don't know what they, they might go in my room and yeah. steal stuff. and Right. You know, so he'd just pull in the driveway and put like one of those sun visors up. <laughs> so the neighbors would see and, and be in the car with them. Did you really, Jim? Yeah, I did that in my house. Yeah, my yeah. parents' house. I'd look at it like 2 in the morning. I'd see the visor up. I'm like, all right, Jim's in. <laughs> that old school visor? That was, yeah, yeah. Oh, was that that was cardboard keep, yeah. thing. Supposed <laughs> to keep the heat off of your steering wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And it basically just kept the wig from bobbing <laughs> so my neighbors could see it. Wait, you did this in your parents' driveway, and I also Yeah, that's where I started oh, yeah. doing it. Crap. And then there was there was like a little park, and you could occasionally get whores by where we lived. But I didn't want to park around there because I was afraid of a cop. So I would park kind of right by the house because it was like a quiet dead end street, and I'm like, no cops would every. You could always see who was coming. Right, so only the class broads you were bringing home. Oh, they were terrific. Yeah, and we'll you're do it right here in the car. Your sweet mom is inside that house, and all hell's breaking loose in the driveway. Well, that, that was what I was at home. Yeah, yeah. I, that's where I first started doing it. I was always afraid. How much look does at a girl of that stature cost? Not a lot. Twenty five bucks. Yeah. Thirty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. And Jim used to always take like the mason jars. From that, because he's drive around the city, and in case he had to relieve himself, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like, "I need another jar." Oh, that's a good. <laughs> I've eaten fruit. He's like, "Can I have that?" I, I'm going to drive around and look at some some hookers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get arrested for, for going outside, so I would actually always carry a jar or a cup <laughs> in the car. It was awful. You were Lenny Legal, <laughs> dude. That's how you knew I was going whoring. I, this, how many times I left the comedy cellar? I'm like, "Hey, can I have like an empty plastic cup with a lid and some napkins?" And they're like, "Why?" And some ice for later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a little lemon and two straws with umbrellas. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Like just old peanut butter jars and stuff, whatever you can find? Anything anything yeah. that you could uh, just stop real quick. And, uh, you know, you had to. You had to. And I didn't want to walk yeah. outside half the time if it's raining or if it's cold out. You know, well, sure. And you don't want to get arrested. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't want to get sick, you know, from the <laughs> rain or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, of just course go with not. a street walker. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I've known, I know I've, I've gone in jars before and things like that in a pinch there in, in the car. And uh, it's not as sanitary as, uh, you know, your bathroom at home. You can't really spend much time making sure everything is gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the girl that you're getting is now getting an extra treat when. Uh, Here's what you gotta do. There's always a kink okay. in the hose. Yeah, yeah, a kink in the hose. <laughs> and you unkink it and like, oh when you, man. You ever, you ever oh, tr- shut the water off yeah. and then go to take the nozzle off your hose? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. There's still water left ah. in there under pressure. You gotta use it like a tourniquet. Like, you ever see the 1776 poster where the guy's had the bandage on his head? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what you gotta do. Like, when you're ready to like open the window and, and throw the cup, like dump the cup, you have to take a napkin in your right palm and cup the top. Yeah. So you don't, uh, so the kink in the hose goes into oh, the napkin. Oh, okay. You have I'll to see. do that. See, this guy. Please. See, I always get the Gatorade bottles with the wide, wide, with the wide mouth. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Need that. That's a key, because sometimes yeah. you don't, and if you got like a regular water bottle, it's tough. Oh. Regular water bottle? I could never do that in a water bottle, ever. I tr- no, a water bottle or a beer bottle? In the old days, I would drive the around beer drinking bottle. Right. a beer. <laughs> I would drive with a beer between my legs and just drink as sure. I'm driving. Uh and when you're done with uh, a bottle, you just use it to go in and then throw it out the window. And a beer bottle is tough to line up. That's like lining up a difficult pool shot. Yeah. <laughs> you really have And it's to, dark, and you don't know if yeah. you're close to the top. Yeah, and, and you can't move once you start. Right. Yeah. Because like that linkage, you don't have much. There isn't much plus or minus. On you, that. you do realize those things fill up real fast. Yeah, yeah, like, and then what? you start panicking and going, uh oh. <laughs> let me feel here. I still got a ways to go, and we're up to the top of the bud label. <laughs> I, be a I, problem. I used to keep the Gatorade bottle under my seat, and one time I had a girl in the car, and I stopped short at a traffic light and rolled right under her feet. And she's like, oh, you got Gatorade? I'm thirsty. And I'm like, nah, she had, it's been in there for a while. And she's like, no, I just, I'm like, no, nah, we'll just stop and get some. You know, I should have had her drink it, though. I should have. <laughs> But she was nice. Oh, it's delicious. Uh, ooh, lemon lime, my favorite. One of my favorite stories was Florentine uh, was going to a gig, and uh, you had a Starbucks cup. It was a McDonald's cup. A McDonald's cup, and uh, you didn't. It was dark, and you didn't realize the bottom was like. Uh, I guess what was it leaky? Yeah, because I used it like four different times. <laughs> and, to go to the bathroom, oh, and, so God. by the fourth time, you know, it was like one of those plastic cups. There was a problem. It was saturated. And, uh, yeah, he, what did you have to take off your pants and put them on? He had to drive to a gig with his pants off, 
with them on <laughs> on top of the dashboard. Yeah, with the heat crank it. It was like 90 degrees out because the bottom fell out. I didn't know oh. until about 45 <laughs> seconds in. I had black oh. jeans on. I was running late to a gig. I, t- oh, I pulled man, over, pull- took my pants off, put them on. Yeah, put them on there and just put the- crank the heat 400 oh, that degrees. Must have smelled great. It was awful. And as soon as I got in the club, I went right on the stage and it was all. And I'm like, all right, look, I'll tell you what happened. I told the story, so I just said, oh, stop yeah. looking at me like that. <laughs> I take lemons and make lemonade in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great, man. Cute, cute story. <laughs> All right, we're going to break uh, more with Jim Florentine, but you're playing comics. Yeah, comics this weekend in New York, and then uh, also that uh, that metal show with uh, on VH1 Classic. That's right, man. Congrats on that. Yeah, me, Eddie Trunk, and Don Jameson uh, starts this very Saturday. Very cool. Oh, really, this Saturday? Yeah. yeah. What time? 11 o'clock every Saturday on VH1 Classic. And, and what are you guys talking about? I mean, obviously metal, but what's the angle? Like- it's, it's a half hour. T- it's almost like a best damn sports show period for, you know, just talking about music. Oh, we sit around, do some, you know, and we have a guest come in. That's right. And we just, you know, bust each other's chops and, you know, talk about music and mess with the fans. We do these bits outside concerts and just screw around with people and... Did you, did you see uh, Steven Adler on Celebrity Rehab? Yeah. Well, oh, I didn't I didn't even recognize him. I, I told a story yesterday on the air. I'm like, wow, it's a rock dude. I don't I don't I don't know who he is, but he's really famous and then they finally said it was Steven Adler. I couldn't believe it's the same guy. I got a friend out in California. I just talked to him yesterday. He's hanging out with him now. He said he's a lot better, but he just smokes a lot of pot. Oh really? Day. <laughs> just constantly pot. But he but, says you just got to keep him up because he's really like down and dumb. He thinks you know with the new Guns N' Roses, Slash and those guys ever get back together that he's going to be part of a band and I right. you know it's he's sad, a mess. But there's no way he could. He took yeah. it way too far because it looks like he had seizures and strokes. Yeah, he had a he had a stroke about he did you know, have 15 a stroke, years right? ago. Yeah, because his drugs. mouth kind of moves when he talks in his eyes, and it's just a, <clears throat> it looks very tiring. That was always the joke. It's like how many drugs do you have to do to get thrown out of Guns N' Roses? And yeah. he was the one that did. He was, and he got thrown out early. Yeah, he got thrown they, out right when after these guys after were really rocking, right? Yeah, right before. Yeah, right before, yeah, right before Use Your Illusion came out. Yeah, he's been out of that band for over 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, he was the first to go. Did he still have money? I mean, I don't know how the royalties work with, with music. I'm sure. I mean, those guys. I'm get, sure. Either get paid forever or they get screwed on, mean, the, on the contract. He never stopped any. working. You know, he did a few projects on his own, and uh, you know, n- not if he wrote the, the if, money. But. If he wrote the songs uh, on the first record, then he, he wrote. I think he wrote some of them. Oh, did he? he I know mu- Axel and Izzy write most you know of the stuff. He must have had a good deal because was I, I, I read he was the one that found Axel through an ad, right? Yeah. Wasn't it him and uh, Slash? It was him and Slash. Starting the band, they needed a singer. Wow. So those were those two were the original members, basically, and then they found Axel. So I'm assuming that, that has to mean something financially. What about, um, uh, do you hear any of Appetite? Not Appetite, uh, Chinese Democracy? Yeah. What do you think? What I like it, man. I've, I've got about seven songs that I heard you know, that got leaked, but um, I think well. it's going to be a good record. It's not going to be Appetite for Destruction. That's what everyone's expecting. Right. Yeah. That was well. 87. That was 21 years ago. It came out today. Rolling Stone gave it four stars. Did they really? <laughs> out, out of how many? I think it's five, right? Four the out one, of five, I believe. The one song we heard was okay. We didn't love it, but I didn't listen to it. I was expecting it, it to be a lot worse. Yeah. I really was, but... Yeah, yeah Rolling right. it's a lot. It's a lot of November. You know, there's some hard rock and stuff on it. It's a lot of songs like November Rain too. Mm-hmm. They start off slow and they start rocking. I think it's good, man. It's, it shows you that Axel can really write some songs. I mean, it took him 12 years to write them, so obviously they better be good. Yeah, no kidding. But you know, I mean, I think he's he's the talented. I mean, Slash stuff, but the Velvet Revolver stuff, I never really got into. It was all right. It was all right, but there cool was no song. smash so, smash hits off of that no, stuff. You're right you think between that. Wyland and all those guys from GNR that they can write unbelievable records? Yeah. You know, so I, I'm, I'm, my money's on Axel. And the new band is good. I've seen them guys three times. Do they have Buckethead still? No, they got Bumblefoot instead. <laughs> Bumblefoot. Bumblefoot. He's a Jersey guy from North Brunswick. I talked to him. Yeah. yeah. He's a great dude. Yeah. There's a, him and one of, the, there's a, one of the dudes, a black dude, uh, one of the musicians, right? No. Not at all white. Maybe he's in the new Guns N' Roses then. Not with Axel. Maybe he's, uh, is Axel still in Guns N' Roses? Yeah, well, it's he's a- not going out as Axel Rose. He's going out as, as Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was some black dude Eddie Trunk introduced me to. Maybe he was in the band and out, but I thought he was in the band oh, too. There are a lot of lineup changes over the years, so it's oh. hard to keep track. You know. What the about Black Ice? Like the new ACDC. I like album. it. Everyone's talking about how great it is. I like it. It's good. You know. Look, it's 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 same. Any of those songs could have been on an album from 1975 by ACDC. Wow. They've never changed their sound. It's good. It's a good record. They know how to get the job done. They don't have to experiment with new sounds. They, they never They know do. it works, and they just go, all right, it's just more of the and, same. And that's one band, even in the 80s, never went to the power ballad. Every other band went that <laughs> oh, way. Yeah. You know, Wait, you what's know? the closest pal- Yeah, power. Thunderstruck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 they got nothing, no slow right? songs besides, like, Ride On that was on the Dirty Deeds in 73. So. Yeah. 
Wow, that's okay. Very cool. True. All right, more Florentine. Uh, he's great. He's really great in the comedy clubs, especially comics. C O M I X N Y dot com. But it's uh, Friday and Saturday? Friday, Saturday, yeah. All right, Here very in cool. in New York on 9th and 14th. And when we get back, I think you'd appreciate this, uh, Florentine. A new method of ingesting alcohol. Beautiful. This is amazing. We, we heard about the enema thing that people were trying for a while. I think it was wine enemas or something. Mm -hmm. Gets the alcohol in your system really, really fast. You know something? Uh, I've been so drunk off of wine just drinking it. Yeah. I don't have to get it in my system any faster by, you know, going that route. It also came out very dangerous. Very dangerous. Did it? Yeah, you get alcohol poisoning really, really fast doing oh, it yeah? that way. Yeah. But uh, wait to hear uh, of the new method. Stupid way. Right after the break, we'll do that. Opie and Anthony. We got a busy one. Opie and Anthony in studio. Jim Florentine. He's playing comics here in New York City. Uh, Friday and Saturday night, and then he's got the VH1 show with our old uh, pal Eddie Trunk yep. doing a metal show. Right? Eddie's amazing. I've never seen a guy that knows more about metal. No. It's creepy how much he knows. It's, it is unbelievable. He knows the, you know what band uh, you know the drummer from Saxon was in when he was fourteen. Yeah, and he has his demo tape. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We do a segment on a show called Stump the Trunk where we have some people from the audience ask oh, some questions. Good idea. Yeah, and he get, he gets like three out of four. I always throw one in, like he was wearing this awful leather jacket. In wardrobe, they dress him up. I always, me and Don Jameson always wear like concert shirts. Yeah. And Eddie's like, "You like this?" And I'm like, "Oh no, it looks great." He doesn't know we're messing with him. I'm like, "No, it looks fine." He's like, "You sure?" I'm like, no, "Dude, it'll look good on camera." It will, and it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> so he had this big puffy leather jacket. So I throw in a question, you know, who was Ozzy's, whatever. And then I'm like, "I don't know how this question got in here, Eddie, but um, Rupert started called and he wants his uh, leather jacket back." <laughs> so we get him every time. Set him up. Yeah. Wardrobe stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> And uh, Bear Grylls on our couch behind you, Anthony. Yeah. A man versus wild. Of course. We got a busy one today, sir. Thanks for coming by to say hi. How many seasons have you guys done already? Um, I, you know, I never know how they've measured. We've done 40 shows now. I think this is the third. 40? Um, third season of it, yeah. And uh, so what's... Just, we've just finished filming for the year um, two days ago, so I have to come straight from location straight here. Where are you? We're in Hell's Canyon, Oregon. Really? So yeah, it was a it was a hard one. <laughs> what were you uh, doing there? What kind of hardships? Yeah, <laughs> um, it's the deepest river gorge in America, and it's huge. You know, there's not a road across this place for a hundred miles. You know, not even like a track. You know, it's a you know it's a big old place. And I was dropped in the high mountains in the snow up there. Went through the ice for Frozen Lake. You know, could, genuinely, completely unintentionally up there. You know, I've done it before. Where I'm saying, you know, this is how you get out of it. But we were crossing this lake and it got about three quarters of the way. And it just went. <laughs> Um, so that turned into a bit of an epic, um, but then down at the River Gorge and, you know, a whole series of adventures in, um, almost got pinned in a big stopper in the class four rapids down there. And, um, but anyway, you know, it's like all these things are out of it and it's all good. And, um, you look a little nice shell shocked. Finished. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's been, we've filmed 16 shows this year. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely, it's been our busiest year and, and I've been pushed more than ever before, I think, but we've got a good break now. I've got couple of weeks off and then I'm leading a climbing trip down to Antarctica um, in two weeks and then proper break over Christmas. Oh, very That's, good. Is that like a, a vacation? Antarctica? <laughs> um, well, we just sent a recce crew down there ahead of us and they've just said it's, um, it's, it's yet to get above minus 45 degrees. Mm. I think it should be, you know, it's summertime down there, it should be, you know, Bonnie. minus 15, minus yeah. something. Yeah. Um, no. You know, it's quite cold at the moment. But, Where do you yeah. go on vacation? Do like, you, know, you, you get to do know. all this cool stuff for work, so... When you want to relax. I get home, I get all my sort of old climbing friends ring me up and they go, oh, let's go climb. I go, do you know what? I just want no dramas. Right. <laughs> I want to be safe. I want to be with my family. I want to be warm. <laughs> you should take like a nine to five job for a week for your vacation. <laughs> <laughs> like an office gig. Right. <laughs> <Just> an <laughs> office gig. Right. The thing is, I've just, you know, over the years, I've made myself 100% unemployable in anything sensible, I think, now. Yeah. How do you get out of the rapids? Because a lot of people saying uh, there's, there's a little chatter around that you almost uh, bought it. In the rapids. Yeah, I, I was, um, you know, rapids are always scary. You know, I think you're so powerless against these really big forces of nature. But, um, you know, it was fine and I got out of it. I mean, the, the biggest danger actually often these big rivers is the cold. You mm -hmm. know, you get so cold in these things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you forget it all. I, I kind of, you know, literally have such a dull memory. I get out of these places and you forget about the mosquito bites or the snakes or whatever. <laughs> and 
and everything's great and it's nice seeing you guys again and it's um it's all cool what are you doing in antarctica it's just gotta it seems like an awful place to go <laughs> what do you do it's is there any chicks there it's yeah it's yeah. a place i've you know i've dreamt of going there ever bang since seals. I was a kid. <laughs> you know it's bigger than china and india combined but with a population of like the handful of this room you know so we're exploring some of these coastal ice shells that are about 800 foot vertically straight up ice walls where the southern ocean meets the continent and we're using these bioethanol pad little jet skis to explore that and then we're climbing up one of these ice faces sleeping in these porter ledges you know these hanging bivouac stuff <laughs> Jesus get over Christ the top and then we're out. trying to haul these jet skis up and then we're using the wind to kite ski across the ice and um, we're heading into the big mountains this one very remote um, unclimbed peak there that we're trying to climb and then we're using these electric powered paragliders to fly out of there so it's the whole thing's you know promoting alternative energy and you know the stuff we can do with it and um, and then home for home for Christmas. I, I've seen just do I, it in front of a green screen. <laughs> yeah, really. And then I, put all the stuff in later. You know, <laughs> what's nice for me is that you know I do so much of this man versus wild, and it kind of does take over a lot of the year. And you know, ultimately though, I'm doing man versus wild because I've done so much of this other stuff before, and I kind of want to make sure I don't lose touch of what you know I've kind of always done. So I'm going with three of my best old army buddies and we're heading down there and you know no cameras no nothing just us guys and wow. for me it's a real joy it's what I'm really looking forward to. How do you uh, sleep on the side of a mountain like that? I've seen those things. How do you get a good night's sleep? It's a hammock that you nail it, it's, into it's, the side of a mountain pretty much. That's the most insane thing I've seen. Yeah and no, I'll tell you at Christmas time <laughs> you know it's um See how it goes. You know, it's not it's not comfy and it's small and you can't roll over because you've got a three right. foot drop but yeah um, you know, the worst places to be. We've all slept somewhere and you, re you, you think you're in your house or something, realize, oh, wait, I'm in a hotel room. I, I, I imagine the same thing happens as you're on the side of a mountain. Oh, well, that's right. I'm you're right. I mean, the cameraman we have on Man vs. Wild always sleepwalks. Oh, great. And, um, and he said, yeah, this is a good job. I'm not coming on this Antarctic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How wide is the ledge you're sleeping on? It's about three foot, two and a half, three foot. No, a lot of the yeah. times these guys don't even have a ledge. They, they have, what is it called? Porter ledge. A, a porter ledge. They they nail this thing into the side of these ledges and and sleep in these hammocks that are just hanging. Yeah, that's what. Off we're the in. side. <laughs> and and the drop is you know <laughs> thousand two thousand feet. Some I don't know. Why should a helicopter just drop you on the top? <laughs> What's the matter with you? We're about three thousand miles from the you know. It's um. But it'll be an amazing experience, I think, to be this place that literally is so vast. I think you know it's it's hard for us to get an idea of just how remote some of these places are and we film you know man vs what all over the world and people sometimes say you know where can you go you've been to all these places but i find the more places i go the more i think flipping nor you know we're not even scratching the surface of this and you know i need 10 lifetimes to get near it and it's um you know you go to hell's canyon you, you guys probably haven't have you heard of hell's canyon no do you know what i mean it's it's one of the great wildernesses in america and nobody's heard of it and that's what's amazing about your country you know you can just keep going to these places and there's no roads there's vast mountains there's just unbelievably beautiful scenery and dramatic landscapes and but people don't know about it See, there's plenty of room drill <laughs> <laughs> and wants uh drilling to drill everywhere <laughs> everywhere sure <laughs> in the new season um you're going to be wrestling a boa constrictor I had a bit of an incident with a big boa constrictor in the jungles of Belize, and it's uh, where we used to do a lot of the training with the British Army for the jungle training, and it, you know, it is the most dangerous jungle in the world, you know, period. Yeah. Why? Um, just it's got the highest concentration, all the, you know, all the nasties, you know, all the snakes and you name it. Um, Everything has poison. Yeah, it really does. Lady and that's what poisonous jungles, ladybugs. You know? yeah. That's the way. That's why animals survive in the jungle yeah. is that they become so venomous. That they get, you know, they they're protected from their prey. Um, but yeah, so I came across this big boa constrictor, and um, how big? Yeah, it's ten foot, so as thick as your leg. You know, it's a big, aggressive thing snapping away at me, and I was, it went for me, and I backed off, and then tripped over a root. I was moving backwards, and went. <laughs> um, but anyway, I had it for breakfast in the end, and that was all, all oh. you know, good. And but jungles are always tough, you know. They're um, the shows I've kind of learnt over the years to dread just because it's you know it's torrential rain all day it's just mosquitoes it's all the nasty snakes that you know I came across in this deep cave these whip scorpions that are the, undoubtedly the most nasty looking animals I've ever seen they're about oh. a foot across 
combination of a scorpion and a massive spider. And they live in the dark, deep underground, yeah. in these small caves I was crawling through. And I came across this one. And you think, you know, if Hollywood had tried to design the most nasty monster on Earth, you'd, you'd get somewhere closer. you think, I never even knew these things existed. How do they respond to, like, a little scratch or a friendly little pet? They move. They're, they're so hard to catch. You oh. just go near it, and they're just <laughs> gone and blink of an eye. But I, dig, I threw a rock oh, and got it. Oh, look at it. And, um... Yeah, there you go. Ah. Uh, anyway, that was lunch. <clears throat> oh, you, no, you, you you ate that. Yeah, no, there's um, yeah, there's a lot of good energy in that. <laughs> hey, Let's yeah. have a look at it. Oh man, that is nasty. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Me and Jim got to feel like the biggest wusses. We're yeah. complaining about, oh, we we were afraid of silverfish in our apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. silverfish in the apartment. <laughs> we're, we're complaining about flights. Do you know that I don't I like know. the first class on Continental as much as I, uh, yeah, my guess, it's not that bad. And you're he's, a cockroach he's, and I get home. Black and mold and mice stories don't really hold up. You to, eat that to these. <laughs> yeah, but I get home and I'm, you know, I, I kind of love making cookies with the kids. <laughs> you know, I don't tell them about I'm any sure of the wanna... stuff. I just come over to America for twice a year and go on these radio things and try and remember what happened. You know, so things. But I, I genuinely, I don't, I, if I tell my family about this, you know, it's fatal. If a yeah. snake like that size is like choking you out or grabbing you, if you have a knife and you stick the knife in, is there a way to kind of like cut the muscle on, on the snake and get them to like loosen the grip? You know, I've often thought that if, you, if, if they get around you, these big boas, you're, you're, you're really going to battle to get it off you. You've got to work from the head and unpeel it. But I used to think, oh, maybe you could bite through it or cut <laughs> through it. But the thing is, they move so fast. As soon as you did that, it sort of slithers around and suddenly you've got another length of it in front of you. And, you know, but they, they crush. As soon as you breathe out, they apply more pressure. And you breathe uh, out again. So you never get a chance to breathe in. And that's why, that's how they, you know, yeah, get that break. Yeah, here. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you, you, do, you know, I have learned on this, you know, you just got to be so careful with these big, nasty animals and not mess with them too yeah. much. And, you know, you get it right every time, and you know we have a small crew of us, th three or four of us filming this, and same guys who've done almost all of the shows with me. And you know, we do go to difficult places, and I've, I've just learned that um, we've really got to look out for each other, and you know, they're, they're brilliant, brilliant guys, and the real unsung heroes in this for me. Sure. And you, you also eat uh, bear poop. Why? Uh, well, this you is in some, the Transylvanian uh... mountains, and it's got the highest concentration of bears in Europe, and I can't had a bit of an, an encounter with a big, with a massive brown bear, which I came, I was in this forest and came around and it was just kind of there and I was in a red jacket and everything. That's good in the dressed, forest to know. blend in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it looked to me and it, you know, had a good escape, really it wasn't trapped, didn't have young, it, you know, wasn't mating <laughs> and, it, you know, it went off and it was fine, but there was a massive steaming pile of bear poo at the end, you know, that it, um, Done, but they have very fast digestion. You can see the bits of berry and apple in it, so it's fine to you know wash it off and just eat those. And <laughs> not really you know, fine. Again, a low, a low <laughs> point really in my sort of <laughs> low point in my quizzenry life. Yeah, but that, that might be Jim's next level. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. I get a hooker to put a bear hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. could, you yes. just, could you just growl at me <laughs> while I land at this glass coffee table? <laughs> Um, but everyone, you know, everyone always talks about all the kind of bad stuff I eat and the bad animals. You know, there's a lot of amazing stuff. And for me, the, the privilege of the show is being in these places just with a small group of people and doing what I love. And, you know, I get much more nervous coming to these sort of things or the big cities, you know. Yeah. But I do come alive in these places. And it's where it's one of the few places I feel comfortable and thrive. You, you, and you should, it's a great uh, privilege, really. Speaking of that, you should do like an urban uh, version. It would be really good. Of we man are versus kind of, wild. It is on the plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I could send you uptown for a little while. Yeah. I'd love to do an a proper urban one there, you know, showing all the, you know, if you get mugged or if you get stuck in subways or burning buildings right. or, yeah. you know, it's definitely kind of in Dumpster in the diving, you can find food in there. You can yeah. visit. Yeah. Well, you're, you know, you're right, you know, you how to catch rats. You can yeah. live with the mole people. There's a lot of people that live underground in the city, a lot. You go with like the, explore that for a while. Tunnels underneath yeah. the city. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that'd be creepy. amazing. Unbelievable. Anyway, next season. <laughs> yeah. When does the next season start? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I think it's. Um, it says January. That doesn't yeah. seem right, is it? Well, I think it is. Yeah. I think it's um, beginning. Yeah, January. Yeah, we're almost there. I think they've there. saved all the kind of. They're definitely the best shows we've done these ones, and I think they've wanted a bunch of them all together and then put them out all at once. In right. January. Are you running out of things to do with the show? No, I think you know not. I mean, it's. Um, We've done, the, genuinely, after 40 shows, we've done the coolest stuff I've ever done on Man vs. Wild for this. Yeah. You know, and I'm not just saying that for press. You know, I really, you know, I, I know it. And it's um, it's a good feeling. And I think, you know, I will leave this show 
before it starts getting the same. When we start going over endless old, old ground, I will leave it. Yeah. But at the moment, we're still doing cool, cool stuff, and I'm really proud of them. How many shots do you have to get? Like, you must... Yeah, I'm a bit of a pink cushion. <laughs> I yeah. occasionally get Discovery Go Bear. We've been looking at some of these footage and the behind the scenes. That you, you just need to get some jabs. <laughs> uh, cool. But, you know, a lot of the, the, the point of the advice is that it works. Yeah. You know, that's the point. So I don't need a lot of shots. Sometimes it goes wrong. I was in filming on the Iraqi border for one of the shows, and I got quite a bad heat stroke and almost sort of had to be evacuated from it. But, you know, on the whole, it sort of, you know, generally works out. <laughs> what about bees? <laughs> but yeah, bees are bad. Bees what bad. about no, bees? Have you had, have, I don't know. I don't like bees. They bother me. Yes, they hurt me. Well, did you see that show problem. I got stung by all those bees? No. I oh, literally my no. face. Do you not see that? Look at I didn't see that one. Look up. Oh, yeah. Type up. Yeah, pop that up there. Thing or whatever. It's like That's sick. my face is literally like an elephant. And um, I, I was trying to get some honey. I was in Mexico. I was trying to get some honey out of this thing. And I'd smoked them and I'd wrapped myself up. But I'd left a little gap here and these bees just went... And um, and it was fine, but an hour later, literally, I can't see. I'm you know I'm in the middle of the desert. I'm trying to kill this big pit viper as well. And Simon, the cameraman, <laughs> directing me to where the, the snake is, and it's sort of coming at me. And anyway, I kill the snake, eat it, pee inside the snake skin, and then have that around my neck and drink the pee out of it the next day in the salt pans. But uh, you oh. know, literally, my face is still like a balloon out there. Ah, oh, look at his <laughs> look at his face. So wait, did they we'll so put that up on, on our website too? Oh so. wow, did you get nailed? Is there footage of you getting stung? Um, yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all there. I yeah. want to see that footage. So you, you look like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, without <laughs> eyes. That's not a compliment. <laughs> to a Chinese Keanu Reeves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow, there's not even a hint of an eyeball there. So That's wait, amazing. So wait, you you were reaching into a tree for honey? Yeah, it was in a in a sort of mm. little cave, but um, <laughs> they're nasty African mm. bees and you know aggressive I, ones. Uh, every time you come in, I try to yeah. think of the craziest thing you've uh, done that I've seen because I, I, I watched the show. Uh, the camel thing, I think you still haven't topped. Living inside the camel carcass. Oh, doing the old Luke uh, yeah, Skywalker. Just, yeah. Me and Jim did that for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just bring a cliff bar with you instead of trying to get some honey, you know? <laughs> right. The nutritious. But, uh, oh, you went to Turkey for the new season? Yeah, we did. Um, I was in Istan Istanbul once. Istanbul's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, but I'm sure you weren't just weird, walking yeah. around the streets like I was, looking at dumb rugs. <laughs> well, we had a nice day. <laughs> Would you see Pacino there? <laughs> yeah. They try to... Well, if you go to, like, Turkey, all they try to do is sell you a dumb rug. Really? Uh, well, the oh, beach yeah. is right there, Istanbul, right by the airport there. Isn't there a like, bunch of hot chicks? I've been to the airport oh, there. Oh, that would have been nice. We didn't see no beaches with hot chicks. Yeah, it's we right. We went into the, the Blue Mosque and... Uh, and we saw a piece of Mohammed's beard, and, and they try to sell us a rug. That you know was... what you got to do? You got to strap uh, hashish to yourself and then try to get on the plane. There you go. That's good. What do you do in Turkey, though? What's there to do in Turkey that's adventurous? There's, um, there's some seriously remote parts of that country. You know, borders, Syria, Iran, Iraq. Mm -hmm. You know, and up in the high mountains there, it's, um, you know, it's wild. I was doing big waterfall descents and building rafts and then I ended up in uh, these amazing canyons with these Christian caves it's where the Christians used to hide from the Romans and literally you know thousand foot canyon walls and halfway up you suddenly see little windows and they would have tunneled up through the rock and lived you know hundreds and hundreds of them lived in these communities and you know these caves completely unexplored you know you there's some you know right down you know 20 miles away where people might have visited but you, you know 50 miles down this canyon people have just never been there and it was amazing. I was climbing up all through these things and then doing big free climbs up the edge of the canyon wall out of the windows of these caves. And it was, it was amazing. I, I love that place. Yeah. And I was amazed at just how remote parts of it are. Did you find any cool uh, little relics and stuff like that? You ever grab right. a few of those and take them um, home? <laughs> um, yeah, I found an old um, pirate pipe when I was in Belize. Which they reckon it was about 300 years old. And That's it was a cool. pipe from one of the pirates there. And, That's um, pretty cool. That was cool. It was deep in a cave. I yeah. thought there's got to be tre treasure here. <laughs> yeah. But sadly, it was just a whip scorpion down there. That was it. <laughs> there was no uh, like uh, from the from those caves. There was no like spoons or just anything that they used. It was, yeah, a huge, hat, perhaps. Great, big, um, huge, great big rock <laughs> wheels across these entrances. And what they do is just wheel these across to one entrance. And yeah, then wells and and little tunnels and little shelves and little areas where they'd cook. And then funnels where they'd have the water running down trenches to all the bedrooms, unbelievable, untouched for thousands of years. Wow! You know, and then um, 
and then I was into all the desert. That's when I got heat stroke and had a bit of a battle then, but yeah. you know, worked out. <laughs> That's wild. That's a little too much. Hence, man versus wild. I, don't know. <laughs> I like, uh, what do I like? Watching TV. Yeah, I know. I like uh, Call of Duty 5 is coming out, so I'll play a little of that. Mm -hmm. ah. yeah, it keeps me safe. Yeah. What about, are, you, are you scared? What, what were you looking uh, I'm at? I'm looking at the footage of him going after, like, you look, you're looking into a cave. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a big, how big was that beehive? Um... Oh gosh, you know it's like you know, it's so big. Like we have a foot and a half, two feet across. That was really large. Yeah, that's. Uh, and he's like looking in. That's not smart. Yeah, I'm doing a great job of narrating, by the way. One bee that really got me. <laughs> one bee just, just one that really hammered really me right on the vein in the, in the eye. You know, oh. and that's why. Um, that's why it kind of went bad. But yeah. hey, you know that's all the bad side of Man vs. Wild. There's lots of good. <laughs> that's that's why oh. the show is worth watching, man. You never know what to, what's going to happen to you. So. All right, we got to uh, take a break. Want to thank Bear for uh, stopping in. So it's Man vs. Wild Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on the Discovery Channel. They're showing uh, new uh, new episodes in January, but a lot of people probably haven't seen all the uh, older yeah, ones. Yeah, they so roll out Wednesday nights. They now. keep rolling them out. All right. Wow, creepy. Cool. Thanks. Uh, nice to be with Ooh. you guys again. Absolutely. Yeah, tuck your shirt, and that'll impress the bees. Exactly. They'll see <laughs> your helmet and sting that. Yeah, he's like, this guy's not a slob, so maybe <laughs> yeah. he won't sting him. Right. <laughs> he's well kempt. <laughs> so if you smoke them normally, bees will just kind of go to sleep. Yeah. What are, they do? what are you doing? You're going into a bees hive. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> hey, listen, we learn our lessons, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. Oh. I want to see him get stung so bad. I can't wait. <laughs> it's just one bee as well. That's the thing. Yeah. It's not all of the crocodiles and snakes I've had. It's one ruddy bee that gets me at the end. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Made you look out silly. The, the hive. <laughs> you certainly did. All right. A big fire there. You get a little smoke and uh, you fan it into the, the hive. And what do they do? That's supposed the to chill that, the bees yeah, probably, out. There's a lot of flames going, and that probably pissed Yeah, that probably, they probably didn't like the fire part of the smoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you see the beekeepers, they got those little things, those little cans, and they blow the smoke on the... Uh, yeah, just the nice, little, like... Yeah, yeah, but if you haven't got a can, you know... I mean, yeah, yeah, then you got to kind of make it. And... <laughs> anyway, I did get the honey, and the honey was great. And you got something uh. over your mouth like Jesse James robbing a train. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was my underpants, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and one bee gets him. You got the honey, though? Yeah. Got that. And he yeah. said it tasted good. We got to uh, yeah. take a break. So, Bear, right, thank you so much. Man vs. Wild, Wednesdays on the Discovery Channel. New episodes, January, February. All right? Thank you. All right, we'll continue with Jim Florentine in just a bit. Opie and Anthony. It's Opie and Anthony. Norton's got a book signing. You got a lot going on, actually, Jimmy. I got two signings this week. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. I haven't been to Staten Island in probably 10 years. I'm doing Barnes & Noble on Richmond Avenue at 7 p.m. in Staten Island. The K-Rock girls will be there. And then Thursday, I continue my whirlwind, uh, nice location tour to uh, Borders in uh, Providence, Rhode Island on Providence Place. That's a 6 p.m. signing. And then I'm heading up to Boston to do the over. Ten years. Wait till you see that Verrazano toll. It's going to drive you crazy. Well, I won't be going into it. got to be 2 $3. No, no, it's probably like 11 now. Yeah. It is. <laughs> you used to have a, a joke about the Verrazano. What was that one you had? Oh, boy. I, like it was seven bucks or eight bucks for. You don't remember it? I don't remember. It was seven dollars. <laughs> oh, no. Well, for... I'm sure Jim does. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember it actually. I'm it sure something... it was something about AIDS. No, it was uh, <laughs> probably something really like just very not well thought out. Seven dollars? Do I get a you know a hooker or something? Yeah, just, ah, yes, just yeah. something like A plus B equals C. Yeah. You know, it's probably some <laughs> basic crappy joke, some drive basic formula the, joke. Drive across the bridge while you eat obese primate. Oof. <laughs> remember that one, Jimmy? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know what? He's always been a disgusting since the beginning because I started with him, and I remember I, the first gig I got him, I was running this open mic, and he did some joke about having sex with his grandmother in church. Yeah. And, it, like, with his mother watching or pushing on, I don't know, whatever it was. It was awful. And I remember this booker saw us there, and he was booking these little rooms. Like Casey? Yeah, and he said, he goes, that little kid's a Nazi. He goes, that kid, what's, don't ever put him on stage anymore. I go, nah, he's a nice guy. He goes, a nice guy, look what he's talking about. A week later, the guy calls up, he goes, look, I need an MC. Bring an MC with uh -huh. you. I bring him. He shows up, it's the same booker. He goes, come here. He brings me in the back room. He goes, that kid's not going on my stage. That kid's a Nazi. And I'm like, no, he's fine. He's not dirty. He's like, what do you mean he's not dirty? I heard his act. And I told Jim, I go, Jim, you got to cut that joke out. He's like, all right, fine. 
And you did, and you got 25 bucks for the gig. Yeah, I saw a photocopy that was Coast to Coast Entertainment. <laughs> Guys, I think it was Casey Martin who was the booker, and you know, he gave me some early work. You yeah, gave uh, up your principles for 25 bucks. You nice. bet I did. I, I soft-shoed. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim used to follow, like, I started about six months before Jim. He used to come to my gigs at this one place and sit right in the front table with, like, some other guy. Tyler, and just, my buddy. Tyler, this black dude, and just stare at me while I was on stage. And it was, like, late, you know, early 90s, late 80s, and I wear the tight pants, I had long hair, and I would just stare at my crotch, and he would just make me uncomfortable. <laughs> and I tell the owner of the club, I go, get that guy out of the front. He always comes to my shows. He's, he's gay. Oh, he just stares at my bulge. I couldn't help it. <laughs> no, you could not see it if you were in the first eight rows. Um, yeah, you guys but, become friends after that. I uh, thought he was such an ass, too. I'm like, yeah. Pat, this guy, Pat Gaynor, is like, I'm going to introduce you to Jam and Jim. And he had his snakeskin boots on. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? He had quite the look back then. I, I didn't. Want, I didn't want to meet him either. Believe me. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, he wants to be a comic. I'm like, are you sure that guy doesn't want to be with me? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, he's. <laughs> I don't. I think he's straight. Yeah. When did he get rid of the Jam and Jim? Yeah, about three, four years. And I, I used to DJ on the radio, so I just used that name. I was That's like a, a rock name. DJ. Sure, why not? And I had headshots, so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna pay for new headshots. Yeah. Uh, Jim Florentine in studio playing comics this uh, weekend here in New York City. C O M I X N Y dot com. Friday and Saturday, yep. and then him and Don and and, uh, and Eddie Trunk have a metal show uh, this Saturday at eleven. It's every Saturday at VH1. VH1 which is classic, great, man. Yeah, it's good. Eddie's been really good. How many episodes they give you? We got eight the first season. We already got picked up for a second season as an air. Nice, very good. What people do you have coming on? Ace Freely, uh, Rush, uh, Brian Johnson, Angus Young, ACDC, Jesus. Twisted Sister, Ingve Malmsteen, Lita Ford, Ingve. You get to hang with all those people? Yeah. Oh, wow, man. I think of you every time when someone's in there, him creeping around. i got to get oh, a picture. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I, I would be a problem. Uh, well. <laughs> How was Ace? Ace is great. Because Eddie's good friends with Ace, so Ace doesn't even remember any of the story. So he's just said, tell that one. I don't remember it. He's like, I did that? <laughs> really? You get a lot of that? <laughs> he likes. Uh, he gets along with Gene, actually, though. I thought they hated oh, each other. no. Did you just oh, say who? Gene Simmons? Yeah, yeah, you didn't bring up Gene, did you? That Why? What's jackass? Oh my God, Here that's we go. that bastard! Oh boy! Ugh. Who's mad at him? Oh, Gene Simmons is oh. a douchebag. <laughs> oh, he's just a tool. Quarantine. He's a, a self-promoting ass oh. who thinks he could get whatever he wants in this world. <laughs> oh. But you can't, Gene. Can you? You couldn't, could you? No, I oh. didn't really care until it hit him personally. Is what he's getting at. One time he uh, went over to um, WB11 and tried, like, picking up on my chick. Yeah. And, WB11, and were you dating her in 97? Or, or wherever it was. <laughs> CW11. <laughs> I, I should remember the C part of that. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just say WPIX? Yeah. Well, he brought that back. He's banging Phil Pix. Picks. Picks. Officer Joe Bolton. <laughs> Going way back. Yeah. Captain McCarthy. That was his name. Yeah, it was... So uh, he tried to pick it. Pick up your check? Yeah, yeah, and, and and at the time she had told him, you know, look, no, you know, stop, because he he was like, like pushing himself on her in in the office, like everybody was watching, uh, and and it made her boss later on go up to her and go, what was going on with him? We're like, what's his problem? And uh, she so she tells me what Gene is pulling, and uh, but before she told me, Gene came right from there to here, so I do an interview with him. We're doing the interview, and he starts like. Like talking about how, you know, maybe tonight I'll have sex with your girlfriend. Something. And I start laughing. I'm like, what? what? Right. Like he's just throwing it in as a jab to me, knowing what he knows, me not knowing what right. happened. Okay. And, and it was, you know, kind of serious at the time because he was, you know, being a real, like, douche about the whole thing. Um, and, uh, and you could, like, making me look like a sap, like a sap, like a douche. So uh, Gene Simmons can kiss my ass. He coming on our show promoting his garbage, his kiss garbage, and uh, <laughs> and, and, and meanwhile he's he's personally uh, disrespecting me. Yep. And uh, uh, the girl that I was going out with at the time that I don't care now if he you know tags with the whole band, but <laughs> whatever. But at the time it meant something. At the time it was like it, it really pissed me off. Stupid Gene. And then I brought up his dumb porno movie that he put out because he's he's he's, he's trying so hard for attention that he's got to put out a porno. Uh, one of these. Oh, someone the, the tape got out. Who did it? And there he is doing the slow mo hump. <laughs> what a lousy, <laughs> lousy lay. It was. Gene I didn't Simmons see. It. He's, yeah. Be. Oh, d horrid. <laughs> Just this slow lumbering, <laughs> mix it up a little, Gene. Mix it up. God damn, he's he's just 
the, 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 the one position, just same speed. The girl looked thrilled to have him on top of her. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, especially if you get taping it, you're going to want to put yeah, on a performance. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. <sighs> Grab an ankle. Something. You didn't say it's black and white? So no. It's not a good movie. No, it's, it's awful. You got it, then? It's, it's not horrible. that impressive. And you would think if Gene Simmons was going to make a movie, he'd, like, tie it into the kiss thing and, you know, show that he could still... You know, when he was on stage and that tongue would come out, like show a little action like that. Just wear, a, this, wear a kiss condom. This, like, yeah, yeah, something. This lumbering, slow motion. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, here I am. I'm going to get this girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's, all That's what I'm doing. This is all you're going to get from Gene. This is all she gets. And this will cost you. <laughs> right now he's thinking of copyright infringements that are going on all over the globe. <laughs> He did the Kiss logo. She tried. How could I screw over other bandmates for money? Yeah, something went on because she went to grab his hair and quickly moved her hand. Moved like her hand like oh, of course, because it would have come off in his uh, her hand. <laughs> Look, that head of hair. Stop it. Look at this lucky girl. What she gets? She is yeah. sexy. Though, <laughs> That's what she's getting. Oh God! What are they on a bathroom rug? Not the bed. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. That's some. Looks, looks like a crappy bed too, Jean. It's like an afghan or something on top of the bed. Anyway. Uh, before we, uh... She's got her shoes on. He's got his shoes on. What is this? Doesn't even take his pants all the way off. wearing socks? I don't know. His pants are still by his ankles. Yeah. yeah. You gotta like That's that, though. Good. The I arrogance. see him shimmy. Go, I have to drop a turd. <laughs> and just shimmy away with his pants by his ankles like an old codger. <laughs> uh, now she's, uh, uh, appears to be on top. <laughs> Look at him. There's He's no chewing effort. gum. There's He's chewing gum in the middle of it. No yeah. effort just is he putting on the forth. Gun. For all of his sexual prowess he loves to talk about, he is just awful. <laughs> God, no payoff whatsoever. She's sexy, though, man. Look at How could I capitalize on a kiss tails? lunchbox? Uh, that is pretty bad. I mean, he's not even grabbing her he's at all when she's on top. Nothing. He's just, oh, God, Gene. Just there. Hey, because uh, we promised it. we got to get this on. Uh, new method of ingesting alcohol. Have you guys figured this one out yet? No. Now, we heard about the enema. People were doing that for a while, and it hits your system a lot faster, and it's very dangerous. Well, the kids have figured out another way to get the alcohol into them faster. Listen to this. Everyone's probably laughing because I've got a box of tampons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but some women are soaking tampons in vodka, inserting them into their vaginas, and men into their rectums for a quick high on alcohol. So they're basically dipping it in, and then when they insert this, into those areas, oh. it goes straight into their bloodstreams. It's just like injecting it. Yeah, there's no stop. Maybe two girls tried this. Who's doing who's that? Doing and what this? guy is doing this? Yeah, Although gay guys are into a lot of weird stuff. Who's doing this for real? Mm. This is uh, a little titillation for their final there would news be, program. There's no reason for that. <laughs> what is? What are you doing with a tampon? <laughs> just dipped in booze. <laughs> Vaginally, that is just going to destroy the vagina. I mean, the How? bacteria. Well, there's a doctor. She knows. Well, that. let me let me let me tell you something. Uh, you ever have a toothache? And uh, you know, before I had dental coverage, what you would do is take um, some Jack Daniels mm -hmm. in a shot glass, and you swish it around by that awful tooth, and the pain would just go away, and you would gulp it down. But um, you know, be even before you swallowed it and realized you were drunk, uh, the pain would go away. But your cheek. Like, it would eat away at any membrane on your cheek. So if you ran your tongue on your cheek where that side was, where the Jack Daniels was being held, it would be all rough and kind of rugged, you know? So I could see that it just would eat away at the membrane inside the, the vaginal wall there and just really, like she said, destroy it. From one tamp? Oh, well, maybe not one, but... Vaginally, it, that yeah. is just going to destroy the vagina. I mean, the bacterial environment is a nice balance for women. It's a perfect equilibrium. When you do something like Some that, more perfect you completely than others. destroy it. You're going to set yourself up for yeast infections, bacterial infections, not to mention um, the vagina material is going to crack and break because you're going to get burns wow. and things like that. So it's just going to completely destroy the vagina. It's, it's I'm, I'm just trying to find out what Why? could possibly be fun about this. Yep. Well, wow. Oh, yeah, a watching. girl drunk. Yeah, yeah, drunk girl doing that is yeah. hysterical. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. oh, my God, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's prepping to get hammered later. He's <laughs> cleaning out. <laughs> Tampon just came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a hell of a...
Yeah, I know. A hell of a way to get drunk. I thought you were going to tell me something maybe I could use, experiment with, or have a little fun with. Well, I'm not doing that, Opie. Well, well. And you know the other thing about this is, unlike, let's say you've had two beers. You know you've had two beers. Mm -hmm. With this, it, you don't know. You could do this, stand up, fall, crack your head, and die. You have, mm -hmm. you no, have no control. You have, oh, Jesus. Oh, really? By the way, I think we should cover this story again in ten minutes. Uh, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah. of course. I want to talk about the cop, how he has to give the breathalyzer. <laughs> 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 yeah, we definitely have to talk about this in a few minutes. Yeah, maybe. I think we all have a Bloody Mary joke in us. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's That's it. It. Oh, uh, who are you kidding? <laughs> uh, mm -mm. <laughs> who doesn't like one of those on a Sunday morning? Oh, they're they're with, with brunch. Oh, they're boy. fantastic. Terrific. You know, I thought this was bizarre. This next story is even more bizarre. I had never heard of it until recently. Beer bongs. Children, kids are doing this into their anuses. Literally <laughs> taking a beer bong. And Jim, you've got an example there. This, you know, kind of reminds you of the old college days. You know, it's the but this instead of going in the mouth, you're sticking it somewhere else. Does it look fun? Does it look fun? Certainly does. Why would you ask that, sir? Does it look what, fun? Like I don't understand what you're doing with the beer bong. Yeah. You're just pouring. I guess. Oh, I'll figure that out. I need pictures. <laughs> I guess. I need pictures. And then finally. I can't. I, I just, I don't get it. Well, there's I, something, like you said, if you drink into your stomach, there's first pass metabolism through your liver. Well, there are some blood vessels in the rectum that miss that first pass. So sure. you do feel the effects quicker. We're trying really? to teach our kids creativity, but I not this so. guy. You know, yeah. I mean, sure, well, you just did. What? That's what I hate they about just these asses. Bought them. Hey, you get drunk quicker. They just uh, d turned a lot of uh, teenagers onto a new method. Bypasses the liver. They make believe they're like uh, getting the knowledge out there, you know, be, to yeah. watch out for this. But more people will now do it because of their dumb report. I love to have, do it to so have someone do it that way, and then you know, some new guy walks in like, "Oh, do a beer bong out of your mouth." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, this beer tastes like crap. <laughs> Jim, I'm sure you were a big drinker back in the day. Do you do anything creepy like that? No, never, never anything. Uh, it was always just out of a bottle. Uh, never anything fancy. It was using yeah. Meisterbrau. There was no oh, brain alcohol. No like orifice that. evolved because no, no, it never did. No, none, uh, none. I used to snort vodka as a goof. No, what are they? Yeah, they called it what a chili willy or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, like you turn over the shot glass and that that little like thing. Yeah, the little indent. Yeah, you're not doing much, but I would yeah. I would just drink it like yeah. a normal human. As a being. goof, we would snort uh, vodka shots. Yeah, not the whole shot. That'd be insane. You drink too? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I you know if I want to get a quick buzz, I'll do like a couple shots of Jaeger and a beer. That's, and I, and yeah, that's my. I point. get it within like 20 minutes. I get a nice buzz. Yeah, so, I don't need to put it in. No, no. put it somewhere. You know no. what the problem I have is, especially with drinking beers. I will just drink beer all day. Like, if, I, if, if I'm drinking two, I'm drinking a uh, 12-pack. Just hanging out. Why not? Like, I can't just stop it, too. The word, the word you're looking for is alcoholic. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> One's too many and a hundred's not enough. <laughs> they kind of defined it, Ant. Yeah. No, it's... Sorry it's, to say. No, I'm saying if, <laughs> if I had to stop, I'd stop. You can't But just, I yeah. just don't... Like... I, I, I choose not to. It's yes. just... You start I, drinking just, during the day? I'll just sit there and drink. What am I going to drink at night? i got to go to sleep at 7. That's true. <laughs> you know? So uh, after noon... start drinking during the view. On the, <laughs> 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 on the drive home. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, we got to head out. Oh, so, okay. Florentine's at Comics, uh, Friday and Saturday. Go see him. Great comic. C O M I X N Y dot com. Yeah, everybody knows Florentine's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yes. And of course, the show with Don and Eddie Trunk is right. Saturday nights on VH1, a metal show, which uh, the, I didn't realize you had so many really cool people on there. Yeah, yeah, really we got some good, good guests. And um, uh, Joe Howard's actually on the show of comics. He's a Cleveland uh, comic. Okay. He's coming in. He's a really funny guy. He's a big fan of the show. Okay. So he's coming to open it for me. So. Very nice. All right, we're going to continue in just a bit. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Hi. Jim Florentine. 
Don Jameson. Yo. We were talking about uh, tampons with vodka, of pussies and assholes. <laughs> See the yeah. difference? Yeah. See now, what we do now? Have a straight conversation. Now we can talk about the Bloody Marys and uh, yeah, I feel like I was hanging out with my family at the Thanksgiving table and I couldn't yeah, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And now we're in the basement saying. with the guys. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> yeah. loosening our belt buckles and talking <laughs> like men, right? Yeah, I. Look at I that. would. Uh, yeah, I know. We. Uh, this is great. Now we're in the studio with like ten TVs, so we, yeah. we're constantly distracted. We do this all day. It's like we're talking about something. They go, "Look at that!" I know. I, <laughs> I know. I say this almost well, not weekly, but you sure there wasn't a TV that used to be right there? <laughs> I are keep thinking starting, people are pilfering. Are they starting to take shit? Because if I would, yeah, this business is so like. On shaky ground, I would just start taking shit. That's just what start, I did. Yeah, you know, leaving with stuff. When I knew they were changing formats in Buffalo, when I worked up there, I'm like, oh man, this is right. a great opportunity. I went right to the prize closet and I was I took set, all the CDs and stuff, right. box sets, <laughs> everything, <laughs> concert tickets, Buffalo Bills tickets. I destroyed the place, <laughs> and no one cared. That was the beauty. Right. They didn't come after me. They're like, yeah, well, we got you in the end because you're fired. I'm like, all right, but I leave with some nice. Uh, you know, consolation prize. Some swag. Some swag, right. Mm. Were they switching formats, or are they just getting ready? Yeah. yeah. They switched. Uh, and then um, I think Opie yeah, made it through. I'm sorry. I thought you made it through that one. Well, they fired all of us, and then they sat a few of us down and said, well, you're not really fired. I'm like, well, thanks. They say, good, I stole all the shit, right. and uh, I'm not <laughs> you, even fired, you right. idiot. I, I forgot about that. You're right. But then they went younger rock, so, like, I had the yes box said. You're not, you're not, we're not playing yes yeah. anymore, you know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But they should have maybe sat me down ahead of time and then gave me the wink in the conference room when they were firing everyone. Like, everyone's fired, but you know who. Wink, wink. Right. Where's our scummiest uh, intern? Do we have one who? today? I, I don't know. I, I, I want this weird thing every day. I, I'm really difficult. A fucking pen. And there's never one here. All I want is something with ink in it. Really? It's fucking irritating. Uh, you want cakey, not flaky? Is that what you're getting <laughs> No, at? no, I don't want cakey, not I flaky. Saw they're talking about Starbucks all over I the want, place because their profits are down 97%. You I want, ga you. I want oh, gamey. Thanks. Thanks. You want gamey? <laughs> yes. We, we, I need a little fucking douchebag to go out and get my goddamn Call of Duty 5. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Hey, Travis, where's the intern? Uh, what well, what's he doing? We only have one today. I, I know, oh, but it's, I want to pay on the table. I can't send him out for a game if we only got one. Fuck it. Yes, you can. Oh, why don't you do it, Travis? You don't do anything. I'll go do it. I'll buy myself one. All right, oh, go. Look at him. That's right. I don't care. Get uh, Anthony's Call of Duty hey. game. Pick me up some Melba toast. All right. All right. All right. Melba toast. I love Melba. What are you, eighty-five? Okay. <laughs> Melba toast. That's something like your your mom yeah. had and. What is it? No. Yeah, you, you ate it only when it. you were starving. Well, you put jam on that, <laughs> huh? You can go home and watch Murder She Wrote. Yeah, you put you marmalade on that. I'm only little, kidding. I don't like marmalade. marmalade. Yeah, little Have marmalade. some orange marmalade. marmalade. My mother used to buy the worst <laughs> fucking shit for just snacking because she was constantly like, try, I guess, trying to keep her weight down until she found Coke, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have to worry about it, but. Uh, she would because she was a cocktail waitress, so she had to be you know thin. So she would get Melba toast. And fucking like this diet coffee soda. It was everything she knew kids would never fucking eat. And then put it in, in the in our room. And then it was like the AIDS diet plan. She had the chocolate AIDS <laughs> diet plan. Right, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. in hindsight is hysterical. <laughs> you ever hear those old commercials? Oh, those are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From A Y D S. Like, lose weight with AIDS. Wait, we got to play one. Though. Yeah, yes. I'd like to hear that again. We got to play one with AIDS. The pounds will melt off of you. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they will. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Brady Bunch theme music is playing behind. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and then what's the chocolate ones? Yeah, that, that was, was AIDS. That, that yeah. was it, called that, AIDS. That, that, yeah. Right. Okay. But I used to. Oh, did I eat the AIDS? Oh, did I love those AIDS. <laughs> I'm sure Jim has, too. Yeah. <laughs> Same chocolatey <laughs> mouth when he's done, too. <laughs> uh, we got one of those there. All right, listen to this. I was overweight and embarrassed to go any place. AIDS helped me get back into a size 12. <laughs> the AIDS diet plan helped me get back into a size 6. AIDS helps control your appetite so you lose weight, yet AIDS lets you taste, chew, and enjoy. And the appetite suppressant in AIDS is not a stimulant. AIDS helps me lose the weight. It has nothing in it that could make me nervous. Question. Why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight safely and effectively. Use only as directed. They 
This couldn't have been worded any better. I, I know, yeah. If they said, enjoy this chocolate that shot out of a cock all over your face. <laughs> It couldn't have been worded better. I like the one, I'm down to a size 12. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, to yeah. Thanks to AIDS. What kind of an unfuckable monster were you before that? <laughs> You're down to a 12. Yeah. Big sloppy titted retard. <laughs> but imagine you own the AIDS and then the, the new AIDS comes in and oh, destroys that, your fucking company. Because that was AYDS. Like, once oh, the AIDS no. came out, it pretty much ruined it. Guys, we're going to be rich. Ah, uh, AIDS is really yeah. taking off. Who wants to buy stock? We're going public next week. What? Rock Hudson, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, shit. Yeah. Let's Come get back to the alcohol like just, tampon. Just call it fucking pancreatic cancer and try again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lose weight with pancreatic cancer. Yes. We got to get back to the alcohol tampons because we didn't do that yes. story justice. We say hi to Mike in Ohio. Mikey. Oh. Yeah, Mike. Hey, guys. Love the show. Mike. What? Hi. What's up, hey, Mike? That's a... That newscast you had on earlier, you all make fun of, that is very informative. Why? Well, it, it, now if I go out, you know, and catch my son out behind the garage with a funnel up his ass, I might not have thought nothing about that before, but he could be drinking. Mm. Well, wouldn't that be a relief that he's, like, drinking? If you see your son with a bottle up his ass? A funnel. <laughs> Oh, a funnel, you Oh, said. that's different. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. There's some things I guess you could <laughs> have up your ass and your dad's not going to be concerned. Well, you don't want your kids drinking. That's bad. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah. Uh, Dave the Trucker. Dave, what are you hauling today? Uh, lumber. Lumber? Yeah, yeah, that's lumber. boring. In the year 2008, I don't think we need to be moving our lumber <laughs> around. Exactly. <laughs> well, hey, it gives me a job, so. All right. But uh, so that the, the tampon, uh, you know, the girls have been using that for years. Wisconsin and Minnesota, the high school girls have been doing that. All right. That story really uh, climaxed nicely. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jesus. I'm so glad we attempted the, the bit uh, pyramid that oh. Eric Logan taught us. Remember? I just, all, all I want to do is Leave. hear about a what? tractor trailer spewing lumber all over the road and the driver being killed. <laughs> <laughs> that would do me. Right, Did you well. see footage? Somebody sent me a link to that truck going. It was going around a turn somewhere and it fucking flipped over oh, and yeah. went off the side of the mountain or whatever. Oh, no, I didn't see the side of the mountain. <laughs> you one. don't see... Well, it might, I, I think it was. It was... Uh, they don't show it going up the side of the mountain. You just see it fucking roll. It's being shot from a dashboard cam and you see it roll and then there's all this smoke and stuff, and the and the truck, whatever vehicle is filming, drives by, and you don't see the truck anymore. It just disappeared. Was he okay? I hope. I mean, he couldn't have been. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> he, I, well, he now, now that I been. think about it, he couldn't have been okay. <laughs> We're, we have to be uh, getting, and I'm I'm the last person to fucking bring this psycho babble shit up that they always do when they talk about uh, what you can see these days and everything. But we have to be getting desensitized. We are to the shit that's going on. Because of, like, I pop shit up on the web. Remember, I, I, I would always say I never want to look at, like, the dead shit and the, mm. like, ripped apart yep. stuff. That stuff, <laughs> anything sexual is fine by me. I'll fucking look at girls shitting in each other's mouths. I right. don't care. Whatever yeah. it is sexual, it's, it's hysterical to me. Gay porn. There was a day, well, all the guys were in the office just watching gay porn, laughing our asses off at how silly one man looks sticking his dick in another man's asshole. It just looks funny. <laughs> right. It's it's funny. Them kissing, I can't look at. So I'll fuck. But yeah. fucking is hysterical. And uh, like any of that, I'll watch it. Any of the disgusting, like, here's fucking somebody that was in a motorcycle accident at 100 miles an hour, like laid out 100 yards long, their sure. legs and yeah. shit. I can't watch that. I've just started to be able to look at stills, though, where I'm like, well, that's kind of fucked up. And then I start thinking... In a month or two, I'm going to be looking at videos of fucking, you know, that you thought people you never look half at. dead in the street. Yeah. And jerking off to it. Yeah, and just like <laughs> pounded my meat to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I could look at insurgents and shit like that in, sure. in Iraq. I could look at that shit. I can't look at our guys, but I could look at their side mm. getting fucked up for some reason. That's fine by me. Go to blood, sh <laughs> blood shows. This is weird, man. Bloodshows.com. Yeah. Yeah. Bloodshows.com. Blood shows. Bloodshows.com. Blood That's the bad one. Uh, fucking awful. And I watched a reaction shot of a bunch of brothers in a room, and they're uh, they're watching uh, a Chechenian beheading. And uh, it, the brothers were hysterical. They're like, oh, you know, just 
completely freaking out. But I can't watch the actual beheadings yet. I I, just, I, I just got a video of that from oh. the Taliban cutting one of our guys' heads yeah, off. I, and I, I still, it was two years ago, I'm still fucking freaked out. Jimmy it. describes the, 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 the guy making pig noises uh. because he's squealing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't, no. that shit, no. It was no all, I'm still, I get the chills from it. They were holding the head up in yeah. the camera like that no afterwards. Who said, said, who said it was any of that? They're saying that after you're beheaded, you always just have that dumb, goofy yeah. face on <laughs> yeah. where your eyes are all kind of like, like a Halloween mask. Yeah, yeah. It looks, like, yeah, it looks like an Alice Cooper concert. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks all goofy, and uh, I can't, I can't watch it. I can't listen to that shit. But it looks like you're heading that way. But no, it, it gets me like, like, yeah, you know, I kind of got desensitized a little to at least the still pictures of people that have jumped out of windows and they're splattered on the street or something. It's like, no. all right, it's still. I'll look at that. Oh, fuck, you know. Or that shotgun guy that did the head where it's just split open like a, a Y. Yeah. Like I oh, looked that at that politician guy. Oh no! no, 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 no yeah. Yeah. I've watched that. My That's a video of all twisted. time. But no, this is some guy that committed suicide, and and his head blew open like like when uh, uh, in T two, when the T two thousand got shot in the head and it yeah. split apart. Right. But, you know, yeah. his didn't come back together again. It just <laughs> kind of stayed kinda in that, stay that Y way. shape. The, uh, we, we just we are. We're like. So desensitized to uh, violence and just bloodshed and, and guts yeah. and sex, too. Yeah, Two girls in a cup. Yeah. Two girls in one cup. That, that, put, that first, put me over the edge. At first, I, nah. I couldn't watch it. I was, like, gagging and stuff. Now, I'll fucking show it on Thanksgiving. I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's one of those videos that I find it fantastic now. It looks like Tasty Delight. It's I know. A, it's every, yeah, it's a Dairy Queen. Yeah. It's easy. That, the worst, that's easy. The worst video on blood shows. I mean, there's a lot of them. There's a couple of people being burned alive. Which are terrible. That's gotta be fun, dude. There's there's one it's Islamic little, punishment video that hurts. <laughs> where there's a, a a well or a pit that's been dug and there's a fire in it, and they're like, you know, I'm not a luck bar, and they're like throwing gas on these three guys that are tied up, and they just fucking. Do they know what's gonna happen? <laughs> I, I think they do. They're blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. But I think they suspect when they hear the crackling flames yeah. and smell right. gas. <laughs> but they well, that's really in. the worst part, don't you think? It's this not the like burning a, so much. It's the crackling yeah. sound. This is a fraternity thing. Yeah. Like when they put bananas in the toilet and say you're squeezing feces. When do they, when do they realize it's not an April Fool's prank? Yeah. When they feel the foot on them just kicking them into the fucking pit. <laughs> and then feel an intense pain. Hey, uh, those two guys died in that truck video. Oh, oh did they? So you know, yeah, a little shame. update on that. So, so I know the worst. The worst one on there. The most graphic. It's called blood gutted, mm. and it's fucking. It's almost unwatchable, and I can watch anything. It's these. What uh, is it? Two people having sensitive sex. Yes, with each and other, he Jim? says, "I love you." <laughs> Actually, loving each yeah. other, and, and I, she <laughs> says, "I love you too." Yeah, and then he says, "No like, money exchanged." <laughs> yes, and she tinkled in the toilet and wipes it off. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is disgusting. Exactly. <laughs> It's uh, I think it's also Chechenian and Russian. Yeah. And they're they are fucking animals. They don't play fucking games. Like in the school, just hanging explosives up in the gym with the kid, kids and yeah. setting it off. What not? Why? Why not? They're, no, they're not Arabs. So I, I don't, I'm guessing they're Chechenian. They are Muslim. Now, yes, they are. The Chechens are. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing they're Russian soldiers or whoever they are. They're in a the field. Like it, it looks so like you could scream and no one's going to hear you. It's outdoors in the field, and there might be four or five soldiers laying bound. With their hands tied behind their back, and they all get their throats cut, and they get bled out. It, it's like they're not beheaded, but the uh, the throat gets cut, and then the guy will reach up under like under the chin and like work the head like a Pez dispenser <laughs> to bleed them out. Oh, Holy shit! God. It's fucking. What are you watching no that for? It was Iraq. No, I don't want to see that. I do. Oh, you're crazy. I want to see it. We don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I would no, never yeah. want to see it. It stays with you Nobody has to long. watch it. Oh, I can't no. get through Man vs. Wild. Those days when you're feeling a little down, it creeps into your head, and then yep. you really feel like shit. When you feel a little <laughs> no. weak. Are you in the middle of banging a chick, ready to bang <laughs> yeah. her, and that fucking thought comes in? It's yeah. like, fuck. Is where, everything okay? I'm yeah, like, no. Where, yeah, no. where did your heart on go? <laughs> Can we bring, it bled out. Why would anybody in the office be listening to the show? You know, Why Why would they? Ah, There's layoffs every other day. Why Why would? It's like the field we're talking about. We scream as harder. loud as you want, and no one can right. hear you. <laughs> Let's, uh... Ah, Steve, yes. Holy shit. Let's, uh... I want to bring the sexiness back to the show. We got Eric. That's what I was trying to do. Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. Hey, 
Hey, have you guys checked out that uh, Come Omelet video? I've been waiting to see Come Omelet. I've heard about it. Can I we talk about fantastic. it afterwards? Because i got an omelet coming in about two minutes. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Comeomelet.com, yeah. huh? Egg whites, huh? No yolk? Yeah, that's... Well, uh, yeah, that's the oh, only way you can make omelet. a Come Omelet. Oh, God. How are you going to get the yellow? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the, the fuck I know. Omelet. The guy yeah, right? Yeah, that's good. All right. Comeomelet.com. Mm. That's wonderful. <laughs> no. What? Uh, no, I don't want. I, I want. I want to watch Come Omelet. I don't want to watch. The no, I, I, one. I, I. Yeah. If you guys, Steve, need you to, like Come fine, Omelet? I, I'm not. Uh, I don't know if I've seen Come Omelet. I don't mean that. I mean the actual. Oh, food yes. Food product. Oh, okay. How about we go yes. with Come Omelet? What's that about? <sighs> well, that is. Um, well, I'll describe it. Uh, You've seen Come Omelet? No, I've I've heard about it, and I've heard it described to me, but I haven't seen it. I want to see this. Yeah. Some chick. You know Bukaki is sure. fucking fantastic. That shit will fry up nice? No way. Put it in a frying Get pan and cook here. it up like an omelet and eats it. No. Fucking jizz. That's got to be a big load, though. Uh, it was a bunch of loads from a bunch of guys. Oh, a bunch oh. of loads. She was doing a gangbang Bukaki thing right. all over her face. And then they smeared it off her face and into a measuring cup or something or into a frying pan. And then there it is. Cook it up. Mm, get did a good they do one. A, did they do the switcheroo? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I mean, but that's what I, I'm always very skeptical of yeah, things like that. You, you look for the cut. Like the two girls, one cup. I was very yeah. skeptical that that was actually shit. Yeah. But, um... Do they throw broccoli in and cheese it, and tomatoes yeah, you, and stuff? You got it. You yeah. got it. J just fucking regular jizz doesn't taste good. Yeah. You got to <laughs> no put a few it. spices in there. Yeah. Pepper. Pe people salt. are trying to figure out who else we got in the studio. Don Jameson. I thought I said that. He's he's doing the metal show with uh, Jim Florentine, who's in here, and Eddie Trunk, who's not in here, on VH1. Yeah, VH1 Classic this yeah. uh, Saturday night. Saturday nights at 11 o'clock. That's very cool. Uh, we find Come Mama. Yeah. I just, we can't get it up on Yeah, that. no newspapers. In, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, where's the, Steve? Where's the newspaper? I think that supposed because to there was around? one intern. Oh, what's he? What, yeah, what's he it doing? It doesn't matter. We have one intern. We have twelve guys that work for the show. Someone has to step up and maybe do something they don't want to do. Man. So we're all prepared oh, and shit. come to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they even cut that, back on the newspaper. Is this come omelet? Yes. All right. Uh, well, it's well, hosted it's on slothead.com, man. Oh, the slothead.com? The slothead. I tried to get that domain. <laughs> uh, all right. She's got a face full of jizz. A couple of guys just jacked off in her face. Uh, she's this? already got a pretty full right. pole. You could turn it a little more. When are they going to fix uh, this? Oh, they're never fixing anything TV. around here. Why would they? Uh, she got a mouthful. She looks yeah, like she's uh, under the influence of some kind of drugs. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Why else would you do this? There's another load. Because it's Saturday. What do you feel about these loads on the face, uh, Norton? What do you think about the, those vids? Well, the well, like this all depends on what position you're in. If you're the load giver, it's fantastic. <laughs> if you're the kneeling girl with a mortgage payment, not good. <laughs> now uh, they're scraping into the best, a measuring cup the jizz with a spatula. That's the best part of this video. Some dude, or it has to be another girl, I would assume, right? Uh, working the spatula and scraping the tongue. Into a big measuring cup, yeah. big Pyrex yeah. measuring like Martha cup Stewart. like mom used to use. <laughs> yeah, Martha Stewart <laughs> now, teaching how to make a jizz omelet. Now, when making now you get some of that brown shit from your tongue in the, uh, in the omelet mix. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, no, Some tongue on. scrape. Things. All right, that, that look, could be a load. <laughs> it, 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 no. looks like, it looks like egg white. All right, wait, that might be the switcheroo. They could have done the switcheroo right there. It looked like, why didn't they show it? They should have went, you know what? No, yeah. that's too much. No, that's, that's way too much. Yeah. That's all fucking right. switcheroo. They did a switcheroo. I make my own egg white omelet, so no way it comes out that bad. Yeah, no. I've had all that come on my face, and it just doesn't <laughs> translate. <laughs> boom, boom. Oh, come on. Why don't we do this to see if it works? Yeah, what would it? Because I don't think cum would cook up no. like an egg omelet. Oh, it it gets fake. all fluffy. Oh, well, all right. Well, the guy is coming <laughs> on the omelet. Which, <laughs> that's a little different. Well, why would he need cum on the off. omelet if already the thing's made out of cum? I don't know. Maybe just more. You know, this is for oh, the but, skeptics. But now out there. another cut right there. Another so cut. Who knows? So now she's eating tasty egg whites. Probably. I like the fact the other girl's feeding her the chef hat. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make it authentic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, got, they actually have runny. a prop budget. Well, for the acting skills. <laughs> She's now. No, All right, that's acting. Sorry, um, this isn't. This is. I'm disappointed. It's I know. Come I am too. I heard about cum omelet. Uh, she would now be for a gagging. While, she wouldn't be like no. giving. I don't fake... think she's swallowed it yet. No, come omelet sucks. She's smiling and chewing. No, I'm sorry. You guys missed a good one. Blood, blood gut is a fucking. It's just yeah. a truly good one. Um, I'm not watching. I'm that. Not you don't watching. have to. I'm not watching. You could have just listened to the audio. No, I no. won't even listen. I won't let, I'll leave. I hate really? that. I can't, I can't, I, I'll, sh I'll show him a puss. I can't. I uh, can't go. She's there. being fed. Oh. But like I said, I think that's just.
She's got cum all over her face. What's the fucking big deal if it's cooked? Exactly. You know, she's all of a sudden a little shy. That's not real. No. Yeah. I dub it fake. I absolutely hate fake fucking shit on the internet. Ugh. Especially when I really thought I was going to see a girl eating a load of cum cooked <laughs> up like an omelet. Yeah. Uh, we got Prince from South Carolina that has a question about this whole thing. Prince, what's going on? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Hey, man. All right. Hey, Jimmy, I got a question for you there, bud. Sure. You think this girl uh, maybe perhaps likes cum? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, no, I, I don't think she likes cum. Uh, well, you heard him say it right there. She loves it! <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to John uh, in Tennessee. <laughs> John. And... John. Yeah. Hi, up, John. <laughs> hi, John. Hi, John. What's going on? What's hey. up, John? What do you got? I'm fucking wiping my mouth off with puke from that nasty-ass segment y'all did. What? The cum fucking omelet? Yeah, that was disgusting. Oh, you didn't, you didn't like that? No, I, I guess I, if I had a vivid imagination or whatnot, because that I was fucking puking. Big was, measuring cup full of man cum oh. and then pouring it in the frying pan. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, just thick. Oh, nice and thick. And, and some of the tongue scraping got in there as well. That, that, that was, you know yeah. what the worst part was? All the, like, little, like, uh, darker white and clear spots of the jizz. <laughs> And some of the yellow where, you know, it's been backed up for a while. Oh, it's piss. I gotta hang up. <laughs> yeah, and then some of it's chunky. Like yeah, if you yeah. drank a lot of alcohol, yeah, yeah. it just gets chunky. It gets yeah. a little chunky jism. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's oh he gone. hung up. Oh, well. <laughs> what happened? They could have at least thrown some hash browns and some toast or something with it, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. You know, it's all in the presentation. Yeah, it really is. That wasn't plated very nicely either. No, no garnish. Paper plate, no garnish. You know, right. A little it's, parsley, they a little sprig. A sprig. <laughs> Let's say hi to Paul in Virginia. Paul. Hey there, Paul. Uh, we, have, we absolutely need to get some dietitian to advocate this semen diet because it could work out great for us for two reasons. Mm -hmm. A, we could start our own businesses, and B, you know, there, you know there will be women that want to save money so they could get it directly from the source. Oh, boy. He's trying a little too hard. I didn't even just do what you say. Let me. Uh, it's right. That's what, that's it's, what he said. It's, yeah, it's just uh, fucking screeching Did I get a car halt. crash? Uh, <laughs> well. All right, get out of here. You're just a tool. Yes. Yeah. There was a pubis story I wanted to talk about. Hey, what it's happened? Not, it's not in front of me. I remember that one. You brought it up this morning, and we were going to chat what about it. Where, where, where? There's no one in here. You're, why isn't Erock coming? Everyone you guys disappeared. Why well, doesn't Eric come in? But Everyone's he's all busy. reliable. At least I could count on Danny. No, I, like, I Danny's had a, not here, and, and nothing gets set up. What's that about? No, it was my fault. I had a little issue with a, a, a company that Diarrhea? will not stop calling me today, <laughs> and yesterday, and last week, so I'm losing my mind trying what, to get Oh, company. really? This fucking hospice. <laughs> I, I really want to lose my mind on it. What Call momlet.com? No. <laughs> well, you know somebody? No, but they think I do. It was just, to make a long story short, it's a, this, uh, Too this gym member. Yeah, I know. This gym membership that I had back in You're the day. You're still fucking I'm around still with this gym membership? I'm still fucking with these people. They won't stop calling me. What company they, is it? It's, it's the New York Sports Club. Mm -hmm. And it's not even them because they're not really the problem. It's the company that they're working with uh, that do their collections. It's a company called NARS, National Asset Recovery Services. They're based in Missouri. Please take that information and do what you will. Yeah, of course. They've made my life a, like a living hell for the past week and a half. And they did the same thing to me last year, too. With the same thing? Same thing. So you told them, what, do you get names? They give you fake names. The first you know, guy, I didn't pay him, and now they won't leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. It wasn't even, <laughs> it wasn't, I wasn't even the bill, the billing. The person in responsible for the billing, right. right? You know what I'm saying? But because my name is on it, they just don't. They don't listen to me. These people, they threaten my credit. They go, they go. Well, if, uh, we, we want your your routing number and your checking account. And I'm like, no, I'm not oh, giving yeah, you that. They go like, well, I just we'll gave just, it to a Nigerian. Shut yeah, up. They, and, and they all have Caribbean accents. And they go, well, you know, well, you know, I hope you like your credit rating because it's going to drop a lot because we'll ruin your credit if you don't pay us. And I was like, try it. How much do you owe them? <sighs> they say I owe them like 180 bucks. 180 bucks. But it's not even me. Like, first of all, the person that was responsible for the billing. Like, they took care of this a year ago. Money was paid. Like, there were records I could find. And then they just call you again two years later or a year later. With Did the you give me your social security number? Of course. I mean, like, right, I have then to. Then they no, can mess kidding. up your credit. Oh, no, no when you filled out the application, no. Uh, you know what? I don't but, know. Because if don't they know have what... it, they can fuck up your credit. If they mm -hmm. don't, they can't do anything yeah. to you. Like, I'm so glad that, that the other studio in the back is soundproof because, right. like, I was, I was literally screaming 
You can probably hear it that I was <laughs> I was screaming at the top of my lungs. There's there's something new going on too. There's uh, somebody calls our house all the time trying to extend the warranty on a car I don't own anymore, <laughs> and I keep trying to tell them I don't have this car, and will you stop calling? And, and a lot of erroneous calls myself. And and we said like you can't. Weird. You know, we're, we're, we want to be on the no-call list and all this stuff, and they just openly laugh and then hang up on you. And then <laughs> they, they call laugh. back the next no day. No-call list? <laughs> and anyone else getting this where they openly laugh? Like, yeah, try, try yeah. to stop us from calling. Well, that's that's exactly what's happening. And I don't owe them money nothing. They're I, just trying to get this warranty extended that I, I don't have anymore. Every single call, I I start out very nice. Oh, okay. Like, I was like, I've tried to explain this to a few of your, you know, representatives before. Right. And, you know, midway through, because they interrupt you every six seconds. Right. Well, Mr. Ross, where you says here that we, you owe us, and I'm, by the end of it, I'm like, will you listen to me? <laughs> listen to me! And then, and then they just hang up, and it's like, hello? <laughs> and they're not there anymore. <laughs> this is ten times. Like, like I'm not exaggerating. Ten times in the last you do five days. You want to bring a suit against them for harassment? I would love to. Yeah, start taping I on. would love to. But the new thing is they now laugh at you because yeah. they, they know there's nothing we could do. I uh, I had a, a problem with um, uh, some firm. <sighs> I think it was uh, like a sprinkler company or some shit, and I owed them about 250 bucks. Um, and they hadn't sent me bill. I I always whenever I get my bills, I fucking pay them. So I finally got a bill and paid the fucking thing. And then I get another bill from them for 250 bucks, and I think it's a new bill, so I just fucking fill out a check and send it out. Yeah. So I paid him a couple of times, and then I get a collection agency calling me up saying I owe them $250, it's a sprinkler company, and I go, I, I paid them, and the guy was so condescending on the phone. Yes, uh, Mr. Kumia, we hear that a lot. We paid. Oh, uh, the fact of the matter is, their records show, if you could ha show proof that you paid them, then we'd be happy to, but as of now, you didn't pay them, <laughs> and we... And I'm like, motherfucker, I think I paid him twice, is what I said. Uh, and, and then I, I went back and all my bank statements, found the checks, faxed them right over to him. And he called up, uh, and he wouldn't even apologize or anything. He goes, I'll send these right off to the company, because obviously it was an error on their part. Like, he wouldn't even fucking take no, it. Right. Everybody is uh, uh, an N-word. <laughs> Everyone's an N-word when you uh, are being called by those people. That's it. Yeah, it's, and it's always someone who's been in the country like six seconds. Yeah. Or not even, because they a lot of times these places will outsource yeah, their yeah, call centers. Not even in the United this, one, this one lady I got on the phone, uh, I did some research on the company because I want to know who's harassing me. So I find that they have call centers in, in Jamaica and Panama. Of course. So I get a Caribbean accent on the phone, and I'm like, where you call me from, Jamaica? <laughs> and she just goes, she goes, why, because I have a Caribbean accent? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Danny was. It must suck to get Danny on the phone, oh, dude. I just. Uh, I, I get it. I mean, I used to work at call centers, not for collections or anything, but I know how difficult it could be. So mm. I get it. Like, and I try to have patience with these people, but they just refuse to oh, listen. Right. Fuck them. You know. Hey, the warranty thing is a popular one. Uh, crotch critter. Is what's it? going on? Hey, Ob. Uh, dude, I feel for you, man. I get those calls all the time. This is your second notice that your car warranty is about to expire. Oh, I'm up to the I'm up to the final notice, and the final notice uh, phone oh, call shit. has been going on for six months. So <laughs> oh, it's not dude, it's not that final scam. I don't even I don't even own my car. My wife is right. oh, my car's in my wife's name, and as soon as I find out that it's not my name, they're calling about dude. It's nothing but cunts and donkey fuckers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but they laugh because I say, look, I, I'm going to report you. I'm going to put you on the no call, and they just laugh and hang up. Yeah. Like there's nothing you could do to me. I'm, I'm going to try to hook something up where I can record. Um, thank you, Iraq. I, I, I'm going to record. Um, um, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. What Ghosts. Happened? You're gonna no uh, every call. No, stop it! You're gonna invent something like that. You're yes. a madman for even <laughs> yeah. thinking of the concept. What? Record a phone call. You're gonna put that wow. cup, little cup thing on the suction cup yeah. on your phone. <laughs> I was waiting so much. I'll be, I'll, I was waiting wow, I for you to yeah. come out with that so I could just yeah. bash you with it, and then you froze. I, I'm gonna come up with. No, not come up with. And then you, you're like a guy from the <laughs> happening, ready to kill yourself. No, I wasn't. I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't coming up with it. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook it up because I have one that I bought a long time ago, which is supposed to record into your uh, your uh, your laptop, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it doesn't work. So I have no. to get a new way to record mm. phone calls. It's very easy. Hey, go to Radio, Radio Shack, Shack man. Radio 80 Shack. bucks. They got they're old cassette ones. You put it in, you hook it right yeah, up to your phone, yeah, and you just transfer it from cassette to CD. But That's they, what we do yep. for our... 
those uh, telemarketer CDs we did. Yeah. We still do. Yeah, old so. school. But are they good with um, with the cordless phone or no? It's, no, you got yeah, you have a wire cord. one. Yeah. Hey, okay. uh, speaking of phones, I was watching King of Comedy over the weekend for oh, the twenty yeah. fifth time, probably. Yeah. Love that and one. they try to trace the call. Why in the old days it took so long to trace a call? Do you know anything about this? Eh? I don't know. I think it was for and drama they, purposes. And they yeah. always like would hang one up one like, number at a time. It's like we almost got it. <laughs> they always <laughs> almost have it. They always would run in the room and go, "Oh, yeah. we, like, damn it, we he almost knew. had it." Like the number somewhere on a screen somewhere is coming up like a slot machine. Yeah, <laughs> this one. There's another number. We have an area code. What's the logic I'll, in I'll that? I'll tell you exactly why. Because it was sent out, uh, pings were sent out. <laughs> yeah, oh, so here you go. Start laughing at you. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah, you fucking idiot. You're just <laughs> fucking <laughs> pings. I had a good idea, too. Uh, but in King of Comedy... I never they, believed you. King of Comedy, it seemed like a 10-minute conversation and at the end. Oh, we almost had him. We almost had him. Keep him yeah. on the phone yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to yeah. keep him on the phone longer. So yeah, it had to be at least like a minute or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Three minutes. And there's always five guys in suits and headphones yeah. on. Well, right. yeah, holding always, him close to their ears. And then the bad guy right at the end would go, By the way, I know you're tracing this yeah. call. <laughs> Click. Yeah. Oh, we almost had him. Yeah. And there's always the guy that gives the signal like, It's him, it's him. Listen. And so he picks up the phone really slow. Like it's not going to make a sound. He's not going to hear the click. Click. I always what? tried to pick up the extension in my house when, like, my brother was on the phone. Yeah. And he's dropping on what yeah. he's listening to. Yeah. It'll be never work. Click, click. Hang up the fucking Please. phone, you asshole! Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh shit! Fuck, it works in the movies. Yeah, but the dummy making the call doesn't hear ten people, you know, picking up the guy that hits the big reel-to-reel -reel recorder. <laughs> right. Yeah, the villain always knows exactly how long to stay on the yes. phone. Yes, he should be the guy tracing the call. Anyway, don't insult me by trying to record this phone call. <laughs> Just a dumb thing I saw during King of Comedy. <laughs> uh, and the old school shot of uh, Times Square. Holy crap. That's Everyone always entertaining forgot. to look at. Everyone the old, forgot like, what Times that place Square. used to look like. Just a seen in an old hole. movie. Right at the Paramount Building. Um, the, the, the main shot that everyone knows. The old buses, the old Coca-Cola sign, yeah. the chock full of nuts sign, the Panasonic sign. There was uh, like the porn theater. Yeah. yeah. Theater. Now we got now Theaters. we got Applebee's and Chevy's. Yep. Yeah. Well now it's the Disney Fridays. Store. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. They like to say that now it's Disneyland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. Aw. Whatever happened to the good old days, you can go watch a movie, fucking poke your dick through a hole in yeah. the wall, no one knows nothing. Me and Jim <laughs> were in a booth one time in Times Square, <laughs> and we were next to each other, and a window came up. They had that little window. You can, you know, put your hand through and grab them and finger them or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So we're right next to each other, and there's a mirror across the way, so you can kind of <laughs> see oh, the shit. person. So I, d I did my business, and I, I came right away, right? And it must be made so you could see, like, the chick's ass, too, yeah. and shit if she's turned around. Yeah, oh, she puts it right up to the window, and you can yeah, grab yeah. it, you throw her five bucks or whatever. So I finished first, so I'm just, I'm standing in a booth, I'm like, I'll just stay in here. And I, I could see Jim through the mirror, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, back up. And she's like, what? He's like, back up. And I'm looking like that, and all of a sudden, and she backs her ass up to, like, about an inch away from the, the opening, and you just see Jim's <laughs> tongue come out, go... <laughs> And stick it right in her ass. And she jumps she's like, whoa, easy. easy. Holy shit, Jimmy. Yeah. I saw little, Jim, little Jim's egg head come out of that little bit with his tongue and, and just stick it right like in her ass. Like a baby bird looking to eat. I think that was on 54th yeah. and Broadway. That's where that was. Yeah. You can see the Lion King there now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, is that funny. Dude, do you know what fucking fingers and other shit have been oh. in her ass? Whatever. During the day yeah. she She's, what are you, a communist? Exactly. What's, wrong? What's the matter okay. with you? What am I supposed to Sorry. not be a fucking gentleman? Yeah, what are you? <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> Sorry, I had a moment of uh, clarity oh, there. Yeah, <laughs> fucking beautiful Silly fucking ass. <laughs> beautiful ass. Dude, I used to eat ass in that 54th. Lutheran? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> it was a 54th and uh, Broadway, and uh, you used to be able to touch their ashes and, and, and through the window. And uh, I ate a lot of asses in that place because it was just fucking face height with you. <laughs> but why would you like? Why wouldn't you? Weren't you, scared, you, were you, weren't you scared of that? Anything? No, no, Fuck. certainly wasn't. Yeah, and it does boots are brutal because you know. <laughs> You don't look down when you get in there because it's just loads all over the floor. Oh, fuck. You know what I mean? That's an key. <laughs> I remember one time I was in a booth with a girl with, on the like, phone, like and I was parking under a tree. <laughs> oh, shit. I was probably in there for like twenty minutes. I couldn't get off for some reason. She's on the phone. I'm telling her what to do. Yeah. Finally, it, uh, at least twenty minutes, I'm in there. I'm like, all right. I pull my pants up. I'm get to leave, and my sneakers are like stuck to the floor. <laughs> so I just said, you know what? Fuck this. I just un untied them and walked out of my socks. <laughs> I left them. I'm not. I'm like, there's too many 
many. <laughs> the idea of them having to maybe untie and then tie your laces. There isn't some magic fucking cleansing shit from walking that gets that shit off your laces. So when you're tying your laces, it's just <laughs> guy cum all over your fucking hands. That's why I don't even like like walking around in the city and then you untie your shoes. It's like all that city gack is on your fucking laces. And then you have to put the laces in your mouth. Away. To get oh, you moist. suck on them. You have, yeah. To get them moist to put it through the hole yeah. there. To, you know, so you can retie your no, shoes. No, I just suck on my laces when I get home. Mm. Lick the fucking treads clean. It's like, <laughs> suck, it's like uh, sucking on those honeysuckles. Mm, when you're a kid. Delicious. <laughs> get a little treat. What's Jimmy doing? Paying his bills over there? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, what do you got? I got death some, videos. A fan sent me faces of death. Which, oh, wonderful! Which a lot of these are fake. The original, yeah. Uh, Some very of them are real, fake. but a lot of them are fake. But it's on Blu-ray. The only real ones, and the, the one that fucked me, but it's on Blu-ray. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's <laughs> like fucking. It's like taking a high definition camcorder and taping an episode of fucking My Mother the Car off the TV. <laughs> You can then say, look, it's in high def. Right, yeah. I got taped it off a high def camera, but the original, um, you know, masters mm -hmm. is shit. Well, thank you to the guy who sent it. Um, no, because he's a cunt. He really is. I mean, what am I supposed <laughs> to say? Hey, thanks for nothing, you bag of shit. Either send the entire box set or don't waste everyone's time. <laughs> no, thank you, man. You um, know what uh, You know what I didn't like about Faces of Death that, uh, that creeped me out? No that men sucking each other's cocks. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. what I hated. Yes. The, uh, that was kind of the first thing you saw that was really grotesque. And yeah. The initial... Yeah desensitizing of, of seeing dead things and stuff. It was, I think it was, I forgot which airline it was, PSA or one of those, that crashed in California, and they showed body parts on the roofs of houses and shit and in the streets. Yes. And that fucked me up, because I knew that was real, because it was news footage and stuff. And uh, that I couldn't even watch. But the monkey brain thing I knew was fake. And, and the, uh, the fucking the electrocution is fake. Yeah, yeah, that's fake. The guy getting eaten by the fucking lion or something, and it's filmed by another car, and then it turns into a three-camera Desi Arnaz shoot yeah. from one car. <laughs> it's like, get the fuck out of here. No, How about the one, I don't think it's in part one, where the guy is, I told you, the guy is trapped. Between the subway platform and the train, and he's alive. But as soon as they move the subway car, he's gonna die. Yeah, they don't show them moving it, but he's kind of like propped up on his elbow. He's got to be embarrassed. <laughs> and there's like an, a, a three. He's just kind of like, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah, he kind of looks almost effeminate. Hello. Right. <laughs> and there's paramedics there, and I think they have like a, an oxygen mask over his face, and they're keeping him there because they're bringing down his wife or somebody to say goodbye. Because as soon as they move the subway car, that's like signs. He's uh yeah, but it's it's real footage, and he's uh his body's all twisted up like a tourniquet. They p couldn't have possibly just pulled the subway away and let him spin like a top as the fucking thing pulls out. Well, you wouldn't spin; you just would bleed out. I, I mean, I would think they would take some type of pneumatic devices, put it in there, and push the train away and pull him out. Well, that's what they do. Oh, they don't drive the subway away. That's what I assumed you were talking about. Oh, no. That, no, no. How silly would they that push. be to see him just going, whoa, no. whoa, <laughs> as he's spinning. It's <laughs> 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 like, he'll be all right. His pelvis is coming out his asshole. No, that's no, no, no. That's what they, the train is stopped. Ah. They probably push it away from the platform. Yeah, that's what I would but When think. they push it away... The tourniquet action that, like, because you're twisted up. Yeah, all the blood pressure goes out of your head and upper body, and you're just dead. Just drained. Oh. Can, we have, can we look that up, Danny? Why don't they just put tight pants on him beforehand? I don't know, a belt, perhaps? Yeah, a belt. <laughs> can he live like that? <laughs> and Maybe set up a little living room around the subway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give him a hat. Yeah. Oh, really? I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't move the train. Yes. <laughs> right, just yeah. ruin it for everybody else so you can live your life. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they don't do that. Probably not. It'd be so hard to keep the area clean. Inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> I want to write enough of the Benny Hill music. We got it. We went to 45 minutes the entire episode in real time. Uh, I, I just noticed something. We got Tim Florentine and Don Jameson in the studio. Look how polite they are. They got their food and they just are waiting to eat it. What? These. I these. Know. Well, these. I'm part of that. We all just eat live yeah. on the show. Well, uh, uh, we'll take a break, though. It's not because of that. I got an egg white omelet. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah. So long I'm, day still, to, I'm still deciding if I'm going to eat it yeah. or not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Because you know as soon as you put it in your mouth, right? Uh, of like, course. I already, yeah. I already looked at it. There's a little chunky. Oh, I can, shit. No, that's bad. I see some clear stuff on the top. Yeah, well. <laughs> and Kenny picked it up, so who knows what he did with yeah. fucking hairs. Yeah. <laughs> I put his ghoulish little penis. Oh. I think Kenny has like a five and a half inch dick. That's my really? opinion. Really? You think yeah. it's a little below average? Awful. Probably nah, I think it's I think it's big. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like a club. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big guy, though. He's I like, know. That's why I think he wears tidy whities I guess he. I think he has maybe five and three quarters, fairly thin. I was able to sire children. Yeah. <laughs> right. What about the you. nips? 
Uh, I see him with big areolas. <laughs> Can he? Yeah. Ah, uh, big like baloney type tits. Yeah. <laughs> big areolas. <laughs> big Should have seen him at the gym. Yeah. Knuckle nipples. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good news, the Dow's only down 200 in the first call. Oh, minutes. great. Well, and this DHL thing is ruining uh, a little town called Wilmington. So that's cares? where they're all at. I don't of. live there. They say uh, it's destroying the town. Destroying. 7,000 people from one town being uh, laid off. My, uh, my town's uh, number one export is Jews, well, so it doesn't matter to me. Mm. I don't care. Mm. I got my, uh, my nice neighborhood, mm. as long as I can keep it. Keep when my we, house. When do we feel the trickle down effect of all these people being laid off, where you're dodging bricks and muggers in the street because they? It's going to gonna get ugly, yeah. Because yeah. they need to, you know, feed and their cutting, families and themselves. They're cutting the budget here in New York City so bad. Uh, but Bloomberg says no, we don't want it to go back to like the '70s where everything, the infrastructure, uh, pretty much was just crumbling. It's like, well, have you ever played Sim City? There were any of those games? The second you start <laughs> pulling away the maintenance people. And the lower echelon, things go that's to when shit. things start going to shit. Right. All of a sudden, I, I realized I was playing SimCity, and then I'm running out of money and shit, and everything was going good. I'm like, I'm the best city maker ever. And then I had to pull back on a few things, and then I noticed half my city's on fire. Yeah. And then there's a riot on yeah. another side, and I don't have cops to send in there because I cut that. That game, that game is very realistic. It what, really is. What's going to happen? It's like the, a lot of towns you and cities across America. You could take away the word. Uh, Sim Amusement Park was the same thing. I'm like... Why do I need people there sweeping? Right. I have too many sweepers. I'm going to take them away. And then papers started gathering on the sidewalks. And then the customers walking around going, with the little thing over their head going, rawr, 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 rawr. They're, they're grumbling. And it says, your park is dirty. So they weren't happy even when they're going on the ride. So then the happiness level goes down. And now people aren't showing up. And now you can't pay for maintenance on your, uh, on your machines. And then they're flying off the roller coasters. So you have to keep sweeping. That's yes. what we learned today. Keep fucking sweeping. It all starts with the sweeping. We're so doomed as a society. Yeah. It's it's going to get real. No, because I was just watching the footage of our president uh, uh, elect. Yeah. He's, he's the miracle maker. Well, he, wait for they, the miracles. He better. He better. He's the Messiah. Now we wait for the miracles. He, you wanted he's the job, and now out. you got it, motherfucker. Yeah. Good yeah. luck to you. He's on his little honeymoon period right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. it just hey, the years. White House. Yeah, the, the wife is like, wow, this is great. This is where the kids are going to stay. Yeah. Oh, this is where uh, the Kennedy children stay. Uh, They're going to be in the same rooms and everything. It's like, yeah, great. It just figures be nice. the worst time Fix to be this. the president of the United States and, and finally the black guy gets in. Yeah. The, <laughs> sca the scapegoat. Which he's going to be, he's gonna be yeah. the scapegoat. They're pretty much saying it's the worst time to be the president. Yeah, it, it is. All right, well, you know what? Here you go. Everything <laughs> you is go. fucked. Right. There isn't one thing going well right now for this country. <laughs> Economically, it, it stinks. We're still in a war. Yeah. The fucking, uh, uh, we're at each other's throats. It's just, it's a horrible time to come in as president, and here he is. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm your first black president. Oh, Ooh, boy. fuck. All right. There's going to be pitchforks and fucking torches out in front of the White House after, like, two <laughs> months. When did, when come did, on out here, boy! When do people realize that he can't change this shit anytime soon? March? When's the inauguration? April? He's already <laughs> saying it. Yeah. He's I, already, he's the first day, first day in. He but, was, he's like, okay, I can't fix this they now. They pulled his, his entire detailed agenda off of his website. Mm -hmm. which was there during his oh, whole really? campaign. And just put the vagaries that he usually, hey, prosperity, happiness, blah, 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 blah. Great blah. hope, hope, hope. We've yeah. got a lot blah, of hope blah, here. Blah, 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 Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break so these guys could uh, think Eat about their eating their omelets. <laughs> 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 Enjoy your cum. At, at least I'll put ketchup on it. So it won't be <laughs> oh, that, my hash browns are from, look like they're from someone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> surprise. And when we get back, uh, the broads out there, they're doing uh, some stuff with their pubic area. Pubic fashion after mm. the break. Can I answer a question? No! Somebody, oh, you're right. What? Some fucking guy keeps uh, texting me. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, fucking, he's like, when are you in Atlantic City at the Borgata? I said January 16th, 17th. Oh, God. What an God almighty, the Borgata.com. How many fucking times? Oh, let me cancel the next Why didn't you just text him that? Why do you have to say it on the air? That's a good... <laughs> yeah, you're confused. You know what I mean? Like, you could have just texted him back. Just in case other people oh. wanted to text me. Oh, oh, is that why you did well, that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, give out your, give out your number. Wine. Give out your number. I want to see how many text messages you get in five minutes. 917-267-2602. Oh, I did that on 80 Trunk Show last night. I did his, uh, the Boneyard with him. Yeah. And I wanted a plug for comics this weekend. So I go, yeah. And Ingve Malmsteen was coming in. He was right out in the lobby. I go, yeah, Ingve said he's going to see me this weekend at comics. 
the club in New York City. And he's like, he's going to be out of town. He's leaving tomorrow. I go, oh. no. He said, he goes, really? And Ingve comes in. He goes, Ingve, you going to his comedy show? And he's like, what? Yeah. What comedy <laughs> show? I go, remember at comics you were talking? He goes, I don't remember that. I, I had to get the fucking plug for in. <laughs> he fell for it. Fucking yeah. Eddie Trump. Yeah. What's wrong with you, Eddie? <laughs> Tim Florentine Comics this weekend. We'll continue. <laughs> Hope you and Anthony, Jim Florentine, Don Jameson, Cafe Pacific. What is that about? We're talking about airlines. Ah. And my manager, Jonathan, the fucking arms dealer, has flown ah. everywhere in the world. And uh, he gets upgraded a lot because he has so many miles. He's just a weirdo who travels alone. And um, he said the best like planes, most, the, the most luxurious ones are... Cafe Pacific. Really? Or a Cafe Pacific. But he also told us a story where he's on planes with, like, animals. He's when flown... he's doing, like, the little little uh, jumps. He's flown e everywhere. Yeah. If, if you knew the fucking people that he introduced to Fidel Castro in Cuba, he's... Fucking John, though, we gotta mm. get him on the show. He's a fucking very interesting... Hyman Roth? Yes. <laughs> I'm an old Jew. <coughs> Take the cake, show everybody, and then give everyone a slice. <laughs> Fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's he's been fucking everywhere, dude. All right, we're gonna go. We're right. bigger than U.S. Steel. You know what he does too? He's huh? fucking Jonathan. You ever see his scrapbooks? He does like scrapbooks. He's like a giant child. Oh, my my fucking. This is the guy who handles my career. He showed me at his apartment his scrapbooks, but they're like probably about a foot and a half high. And a foot wide, but like giant, like construction paper scrapbooks. The tape matchbooks in them from other countries, and it's like the the ur I've never had Why? the urge to rip something as badly. <laughs> like one of the matches books on fire. <laughs> I'm holding burn. <laughs> one of the matches books. <laughs> my matches books. Um, books. <laughs> I, always, I always like to pluralize the wrong part. <laughs> And I always ask him, did you get laid over there? He's like, that wasn't what the trip was about. I'm like, well, why go? I know. That's what every trip's about. You know what I mean? <laughs> why go? What do you want to do? Just show that massive scrotum off in a fucking... <laughs> or does he got a big scrotum? Dude, it's fucking... Big bag? It's, it's, a, it's like a water balloon. Whatever he has in the front of Does he have a problem? It's fucking... His dick has Down syndrome. <laughs> he wears... Yeah, he wears tight pants. You look so at his yeah, bulge? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. You yeah. can't not look at his bulge. <laughs> is it the ball bag, you think? Or has he got something else going on? Dude, it's fucking... It looks like... Um, I'm opening my hands... That, like, my fingers. It's a fucking... It's like a small, like, riverbed. Cocoa orbs? <laughs> it's gigantic. I don't know if it's his dick or his bag. It's fucking awful. I, th I think it's his bag. Maybe he's, he's got big balls. Because and, and, Jim was, a, it was Jim's manager first, and I was going to meet with him. He goes, you got to check out his package. <laughs> and the first time I'm meeting a fucking guy of in Hollywood, I'm, wanna... just, yeah, I'm just staring at his package. Because I knew fucking Jim. He's like, what's your plan for your career? I'm like, I don't know. I'm, just fucking, <laughs> just, I'm, like, I'm being oh. hypnotized by your balls. I'm trying to text Jim. I'm like, it's fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> under the table. We used to know this comic named Paul Veneer. <laughs> Remember Paul Veneer? Yeah. He's a, he's does a music parody act and stuff, a lot of crowd work. And we knew Paul for years, and but his fucking package, we, it's all we could look at. Uh, we, we couldn't stop staring at it. We, as soon as we were done with our sets opening for him, we'd try to sit in the front and just stare at his package <laughs> and just giggle. He thought we were laughing at his jokes. Well, he was a funny dude, but that package. We, it's all we could look at. And we'd always ask him, like, you gotta tell us how fucking big it is. And he just would, like, he was like, ah, oh, uh, yeah, all I Comfortable. Come on, fellas. <laughs> yeah. No guy wants the openers to ask that question. No. Oh. What right. is it? The pants? What do you think it is? The I don't pants know. That does that? I don't. Is it how you position? What am I doing right now? I'm doing like the. Uh, I'm doing the split on the seam with the with the balls right down the middle, right? Sit. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, up and a little to the to my left kind of a thing. It's comfortable. Uh, some guys though, you look, you look over, and the both balls are on one side, <laughs> and that'll fuck it up. That'll make it look like, wow, what's going on over there? Yeah, it looks like just like the, the movie Twins, Schwarzenegger and DeVito. <laughs> yeah, and then on the other side, like you know, 
Like a, a mac and cheese noodle. Like a Rolling Stones kind of, yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. Over to that side. All right. I don't know. Speaking of uh, packages, the girls are doing some fun stuff. Image is everything in Southern California, and everyone always wants to look their best, even if it's a body area that only a precious few will ever see. Lou Parker live at uh, one salon where they, um, let's see, they style hair down there. How's that? <laughs> yeah, guys, this is an interesting... <laughs> Ooh, nice, uh, sexy laugh she's got there. Hair down there. Mm. Clever. Down there, on the feet, mm -hmm. on toe knuckles. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is an interesting one. It's one of those ones we've been talking about for weeks now. We're tonight at Damone Roberts. It's a salon hey, in Beverly Hills. Damone! Real... <laughs> right. We're at Damone Roberts. Isn't this great? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that pussy? Out of the hamper? <laughs> <laughs> Damone Ross. <Robert>. Stupid Damone. <laughs> no matter what the pussy looks like, make it seem like that's the place to be. <laughs> hey, isn't this great? <laughs> what, what tickets were it? It's Cheap Trick and... I was just selling those and then... And Earth, uh, Wind, and Fire. Fire. Earth, yeah, Earth, Wind and Fire and Little Brother. <laughs> little Brother, right. <laughs> hey, he's wow. a great looking Some kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> Damone was great in that. What an ass. <laughs> At Damone Roberts, it's a salon in Beverly Hills, really nice, and they carry this product. It's called Betty Beauty, and basically, Betty, if you don't know what that is, and I'm not going to tell you, I'm just going to show you, it's for that area right there, because we are on the news. Ooh. The woman who created this said she wanted to call it Betty. She wanted it to have sort of an old Hollywood uh, theme, yeah. sort of like Ava Gardner, Betty, and it Gardner. has become wildly popular. <laughs> so tonight, on this Friday night, we are getting our Bettys ready. Oh, oh, that God. sounds so unsexy. <laughs> Hopefully you'll have sex with a guy named Mercury, comma, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Betty. Get your Betty, Betty ready. ready. <laughs> that is so unsexy. That's what the cougars do. My Betty's ready, is it? Ugh. Ugh. Die. Looks like a fucking punched mouth with a fucking <laughs> yeah, a scrappy little with beard, no teeth. like Betty Davis <laughs> after the stroke. <laughs> My Betty's ready; it's drooling. <laughs> Ladies, you got to keep your hair down there in tip-top shape. Uh, Waxing it away. What the hell was that? that? It sounds like she got uh, punched. Yeah, <laughs> punched in the Betty. Uh, uh, Me, you, Betty, Betsy's Betty. Yeah. <laughs> Baby maker, wide open. Up shape. Uh, waxing it away, nothing new, but this is. Today I'm getting my Betty dyed hot pink. Yes, you heard her right. Hot pink and in the shape of a bow. Who wants that? Shave it all off, you fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting it all shaved off and I'm getting a baby bonnet. <laughs> 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 That's fucking enraging. Oh, her Betty. Yeah. That is a horrible fucking term for that. <laughs> it's just, that might have been good in World War II. What's wrong with the name we got? That's right. Oh. <laughs> What's up with the name for the cut? Cut. Beef carton. Yeah. Hole. <laughs> Pleasure divot. Whale's eyes. <laughs> Arby sandwich. <laughs> Arby <laughs> sandwich. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Dina Zelioni is one of many women who are daring to spice up their bikini line and Damone Roberts salon in Beverly Hills is giving them the opportunity it is like having a secret a special secret yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. only your rapist knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah a special <laughs> secret yeah. yeah she has it shaved into the shape of a mace can <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. The process is pretty simple. A quick application of bleaching cream to prep the hair. Then 20 minutes later, it's time for color. And girls, we've got choices. Blue, auburn, purple, hot pink, blonde, and even red and green just in time for the holidays. It's also really good for a woman who is older and have a gray hair. So we can use brown and black because nobody wants to see gray hair down there. Oh, they're, they're dying gray snatches. Oh. Oh, God. Ugh. Just shave it. Those hairs are like Brillo. Big coarse grays. What do you think? Dying it pink is going to fucking help? I thought they said time for the colored. 
No, the colors. Oh, the colors. Yes. <laughs> well, imagine if a colored one had gray hair because it's already coarse enough. <laughs> yeah, it would just. It's brutal. It'd be, like, be like kissing Mother Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> You want more of this crap? Hey, Pink, yeah, of course. Yeah, I want to know right, everything about right. the Bettys. All right. Yeah. Brides come in and get blue done for um, that tradition, something barbed, something blue. And why not charm your Betty using these little stencil shapes? We hear men love it in the shape of a heart. No. no. We don't. No, no. we yes. don't. It never looks it's right. Looks ridiculous. Looks silly. Yes. And I, unless it's an actual biological heart. Yeah. Try yeah. that one out. That's kind of nice. <laughs> and and usually they leave too much space between the hair and the... Uh, the hair and the pussy uh, thing. Where like, when they stand up, it looks fine. <laughs> right. And then laying back with their legs up, it's like... It's like someone dropped a fucking little bit of hair in the middle of their belly. Because right. it's so far from the actual pussy. Yeah, what's that about? Uh, yeah. Like a happy trail. Yeah. Well. Like the Hitler mustache is the the worst. Mm -hmm. It looks okay kind of when they're standing up. Little tuft, whatever. But then laying back with their legs spread, it's between their pussy and their belly button. <laughs> it's like you forgot. What, what is this? Yeah, what do I do? Seek Heil this thing? Yeah, who dropped this fucking thing? <laughs> Heart. Heart is the best. Full bone is eight. <laughs> yeah. There's also a peace sign, lightning bolt, butterfly, cat, star, and even a dollar sign. What? There's a little devil that's also fun. Can but I getting get back it? to the wax. <laughs> For the first time, I would say it's a little bit of pain, but it's fleeting pain. It's, uh, it's a little um, more sensitive down there. It's like a rubber band snap. Over <laughs> and over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> But Dina doesn't seem to mind. She wants a beautiful Betty no matter what. And in the end, she says it makes you feel, well, a little clean, a little dirty. Yeah. 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 She would have fucking there to have it shaved in the shape of a tuna can. Yeah. <laughs> you want to <laughs> feel dirty? Take it up to shitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shave my Bartholomew. I'll right. show them. Yeah, right. like, give it a nice sexy name. This is yeah. a dumb Sex in the City segment. 2008, yeah. exactly. Stupid Sex in the City crap. Made every old bitch think uh, they're going out there and scoring. Right. Like, what do you mean? Stop it's, it already. It's the news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the news. Stupid Sex in the City. You know, they're doing another it's fucking the Sex in the, the City, city movie. Culture. Yeah. Because it did so well. That they're uh, making another one. Yeah. I actually have the plot for the. Th I actually have gotten oh, the script. Oh, yep. Jimmy, do yeah. tell. Please Sarah tell. Jessica Parker, mm -hmm. uh, in the opening scene, is in a, in a doctor's office because yeah. she thinks she's pregnant. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. But he says, "I've got some bad news." Uh -huh. Oh no! Uh, you have rectal cancer. <laughs> oh, right. Jimmy, cricket. That and doesn't then, sound good. Yes, they actually cut her asshole out, and the whole rest of the film <laughs> is her learning to shit without an asshole. <laughs> And her friends are only in the second scene. They go to the hospital, and she gives them all the creeps, and they leave. <laughs> yeah, she's got, like, the Louis Vuitton colossomy bag. Yeah. <laughs> and a big ball on her leg because she has no hair left. <laughs> she's eating out a bag of oats. <laughs> Uh, that's that's the plot of the new one. Yeah, I'd, okay, I'd, I'd go see that. That, that I'll see. Of course. Yeah. What What's her Betty look like? Yeah, I don't know. You can't see it because there's a black orderly on her at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she wants to eat, he, climbs, <laughs> he fucks her while he pushes jello into her mouth. <laughs> Buster, Buster Rhymes is playing the orderly. <laughs> oh, oh he well, you got to bring in the black audience. Right? Now, yeah, now, yeah, now I'm watching that. That's like the yeah. slapstick comedy part. Yeah. He fucking punches her right in that fucking Clydesdale face. <laughs> climbs on and fucks her and pushes fucking green jelly in her yeah. mouth. Dice has a funny bit about Sarah Jessica Parks. She goes, she's been fucked so many times, but pussy looks like Rocky's eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, Keith Oberman fans? Oh, he's terrific. I can't get enough of this that guy. That guy really tells it like it is. He just signed a new deal, and I'm glad. So, it, you know, it gives us more time to make fun of this douche. He's a, he's a, he really is. I didn't really, I didn't even mind him that much until he uh, came out against Imus yeah. after the fact. And yeah. then David Schuster. No. Act. He's a lunk-headed cunt. He, he had to tell his audience that behind the scenes he was telling everybody this isn't right. Yeah. And our whole point was you have a fucking national show. Why don't you go on your show in the middle of this controversy and tell, tell people it's not right? 
Oh, yeah, he was bragging after the fact. Oh, I was one of those guys behind closed doors to Jesse, saying we need to fire this guy. To Jesse Jackson, he was yeah, groveling. That fucking that fucking douchebag Jesse Jackson was was sickening. Sickening. Yeah. Well, he did a thing on um, uh, the gay marriage thing that got uh, shot down in California. Yeah. And uh, wasn't he updating like scores a few weeks ago? Yep. Yeah. Well, they, uh, now he's an expert well, in gay marriage. Well, he was the ESPN guy, and I, uh, that's actually when I did like him. Yeah. He did a very good job with the sports thing, and then he's doing his MSNBC show. But now NBC, I think on Sunday nights, yeah, we'll do, they, uh, they put him back. Highlights. Him and Dan Patrick back together. Yeah, like, doing you know, some highlights on NBC. Dan Patrick's great. He's, he's yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely. But, you know, they put him together like everyone's going to be like, ooh, remember 10 years ago? We're yeah. going to watch Football Night in America, which is the fucking worst yeah. title ever. What's it called? It's Football Night in America. That's fucking Every horrendous. Sunday night. I know. Football night in America. That's, yeah. Why in America? Where the fu It's the only country they play it in, you fucking <laughs> asshole. Uh, that name's as bad as Special Delivery with Sam and Dave. Football night in America. Excuse me? No, but it's but it, but it really is the name of a show. Oh, okay. Can you take that back? Our own Sam doing a show with Eastside Dave, and their show is called Special Delivery with Sam and Dave. Why would you plug that? Because it's our, our boy Sam. Who cares? Exactly. Sam, the name's That stinks. hair. Name stinks. Enough already. I want to put a fucking football helmet face mask through that. I think the name Sam and Dave was taken. Oh, you didn't want to get sued by Sam and Dave? What are well, they doing these days? Somebody who knows them. What do they ever do? Yeah. What was their hit song? I don't even remember. Hold on, I'm coming. I'm a soul man. If if their name's really Sam and Dave, you could say you Sam could and say Dave. the Sam and Dave show. Why don't you call it Sam it's and Dave names. on your radio dial? <laughs> The real name. It's a wrestling thing. You like the wrestling. It's not thing. like the Coke and Pepsi show. But we don't want to name it the Sam and Dave show. We would want to name it Sam and Dave. So now, because the blank show, I don't know. We didn't want to put the show in it. So oh, now it's like the Opie and Anthony show, right? Yeah. Well, stupid and lame. And no, no, no. Yeah, the yeah, thing is, yeah. the fucking tools. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry it's been done so well. Show. <laughs> it's been done so well <laughs> by you guys I and by the Ryan and Fetish. Show. I got you now. Yeah. All right. Get lost. All right. Scream. <laughs> Um, well, Keith Olbermann's talking about the game marriage thing. really leave or not. It was all awkward. Yeah. Football night in America. Yeah. It's, it's just how he talks about subjects that just drive me nuts. You want to hear Keith Olbermann talk about the gay marriage thing? Yes. All right. This isn't about yelling, and this isn't about politics, and this isn't really just about Prop 8. And I don't have a personal investment in this. I'm not gay. I had to strain to think of one member of even my very extended family who is. We get it. I have no personal stories of love close the friends. What a fucking... What a fucking insecure nut! Thank you, Jimmy. Yes. He had to have this fucking preamble before he. Because he didn't want people to think, why would he, uh, you yeah. know, defend this? Oh, what is he hiding? Huh? He doesn't oh, tell a fag. <laughs> right. He doesn't tell people he's not black when he's talking about black issues. <laughs> yeah. What a so, fucking no, jerk does. off! Just be secure uh -huh. with who you are, you douche. You really. Stink. That's like a comic when they go, you know, I love my wife, but right. yeah. stop with that. Just fucking come out and say it. Yeah. And, and call her what you're going to call yeah. her. Ladies, nothing against you guys, but. But, but stop. <laughs> yeah, that's a good Excellent point. Excellent point. Stop yeah. fucking prefacing it, you faggots. Just say it. Yeah, well, this is what Keith's doing today. The family who is. I have no personal stories right. of close friends or colleagues fighting prejudice that still pervades their lives. And yet, to me, this vote is horrible. Horrible. Because this isn't about yelling and this isn't about politics. This is about the human heart. And if that yeah. sounds horny, it's about the human asshole so be it. <laughs> and human yeah. penis meeting each other. Yes, it's <laughs> <laughs> right. the, human, the human heart. The human heart. Horrible. Yeah. If it sounds corny, Horrible. yeah, it does. It does. Oh. It sounds douchey. It's worse than it corny. Does. Yeah. You're a douchebag. Yeah. Uh, that sounds corny. So be it. Wait to, shut up. Wait till we get to the Ember of Love line. Why did you say that? <laughs> the Member of Love? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what is it to you? In a time of impermanence and fly-by-night relationships, these people over here want the same chance at permanence and happiness that is your option. They don't want to deny you yours. They don't want to take anything away from you. 
They want what you want, a chance to be a little less alone in the world. Have shitty smelling Only dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you think about it, don't we all? Yes. <laughs> they want what you want, to blow a friend behind a dumpster while walking a small dog. <laughs> <laughs> they want what we all want, six transgendered partners a night. <laughs> He's so dramatic. <laughs> oh, they God. want what we all want, yeah. dad to not vomit when he looks at us. <laughs> 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 in the world only now you are saying to them no you can't have it on these terms maybe something similar if they behave if they don't cause too much trouble you'll even give them all the same legal rights even as you are taking away the legal right which they already had a world around them still anchored in love and marriage and you're saying no you can't marry what if somebody passed a law that said you couldn't marry well, I is, wish they had nine fucking years ago. How about them apples? Oh, or Keep. actually 18 years ago. Yeah. How many houses would you have now? Oh, <laughs> right. my God. At least one other one that I own <laughs> yeah. in Huntington somewhere. That you've never seen? That I've never seen. Uh, and boatloads of cash. And if they told us we couldn't get married anymore, we'd, we'd figure it out, right? Yeah. Figure something out. Exactly. Hey, what Still, who cares? Right. You, then you call it something else, and you right. just fucking make your own ceremony for it, and you do it, and you fuck each other in the ass. Right. What a melodramatic right, guys. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look. Hey, <laughs> to the choir. With me? <laughs> Bunch of, of fucking room, the bathroom. <laughs> room full of Peter Pumpers. And we're not communists, of course. Yes. Um, it's just how he talks about this. Yeah. He's it's trying. So what is oh. it to you? Yeah, right. He's so overly yeah. dramatic and like he like he really cares about this. He's trying Acting. so hard to have moments. Like he always tries so hard. He's such a fucking annoying douche. Like uh. What do you, what do you, we uh, we apologize without limit. <laughs> you <laughs> you fucking said that. What are you, Sir John yeah. Gilgul? <laughs> Just saying we apologize is good enough, but we apologize without, without limit. limit. I we have are, one limit I wanted on that. Yeah. We are dreadfully. <laughs> it's like you fall. Yeah, stop trying so hard to have the moment. Yeah. Stop trying to be quoted. Yeah. You fucking douche. If this country hadn't redefined marriage, black people still couldn't marry white people. Sixteen states. Why do you say that you're not black? Stress what? that. Uh, and you have nothing against black people. I love them. Yes, yeah. some of my best friends. But yeah. let's face it. And when was this there. wonderful time? <laughs> <He's> talking <laughs> up. <laughs> How did this happen? And they always say it with, they always say it with good like I love my wife, but like you never hear a comic go like you know hey look I have affection for rapists, but but <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I'm saying all rapists are bad. White people. Sixteen states had laws on the books which made that illegal what? in 1967. 1967. Wow. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, that was. He long... loves repeating stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 1967. Guess what, Keith? That was a long time ago. You yeah, idiot. It was yeah. a long you could time say ago. It three or four different times. It's still a long time ago. They had to wait because they couldn't say you could put a man on the moon, but I can't marry a white woman. Yeah. And then you know, a couple of short years later, they had to hold on. <laughs> I was trying to enable that joke too. I was trying to. Have you yeah, on. you were. Thank you. Wait a up. Okay. Yep. Uh, what? 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 Uh, what? Uh, what? Were what? you going to help what? like what? careening into the back of my car? I was going to say, waiter, I'll have a B with a bunch of O's, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's good. I'm and appropriate. Uh, 1967, the parents of the president elect of the United States could not have married in nearly one third of the states of the country their son grew up to We leave. understand. Oh, we yes, yes, you need to you drill it home, you where's fucking dummy. The, where's my time machine DeLorean when I need it? <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's trying to put it into terms where we all go, holy shit, and it's not yeah. working, asshole. Mm. We get it. Does, do you understand what that means? We know. Yeah. Parents of the president-elect. Yeah, oh. Bill yeah. Meanwhile, the, meanwhile, the father left after like two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It doesn't he matter. Left. Well, the difference was he you know, was able to get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill K from Philly yeah. reminds me that, yes, he does one of these every night on some dumb topic. But he's trying so hard to, to get that holy shit moment. Yeah. They couldn't even be mad. Of the country, their son grew up to lead. Ugh. But it's worse than that. What? If this country had not redefined marriage, some black people still couldn't marry other black people. 
It is one of the most... Is this pussy boy getting close to crying over this? I and, hope and, so. and first of all, he, he was talking about something 40 years. 40 years is a long fucking time. Yeah. Especially those 40 years. That was a lot of shit going on during that time period. That's and a and long then 40 years. And now he's going back to where black people couldn't even marry each other. Mm -hmm. So now he's going back further. Right. How far back? Other black people. <laughs> It is one of the most overlooked and cruelest parts of our sad history of slavery. Marriages were not legally recognized if the people were slaves. Since slaves were property, they could not be legally husband and wife. My riding and lawnmower child. can't marry my rake. So what? <laughs> that was, it was, I'm just saying that's what it was like back then. Oh my God. That's how, how it was he considered. Go? I'm not saying it was right, wrong, or indifferent. Whatever the fuck it was, that's what it was back in those days. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Guys, talking in today's yeah. mentality, whenever you take the fucking days of slavery and shit like that and try to relate it to today's mentality and intellect and how fucking worldly we're supposed to be, it comes off sounding ridiculous. But back then, they put him on fucking stumps, uh, banged a gavel, and bid on him. And it wasn't people who weren't going, this is horrible. I want my God, 25 bucks. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Why am I doing this? Uh, 20 to $30. It was acceptable. It was what they did. Yeah. Looking back, uh, we understand Looking that, back, but, you see how, you know, but, uh, it was. But, yeah, oh, they didn't allow slaves to be married. They're buying these people. Of course, they're not going to let them get married. <laughs> right. That would ruin everything. Yes. Holy <laughs> shit. This guy is a fucking ass. How much it would suck to have one of your workers all knocked up? Yeah. You see how it works in your workplace. Doesn't. The broad doesn't want to do anything for nine months. <laughs> and you can't fire because, you know, uh -huh. human resources gets worse. So you're stuck with a big, fat, pregnant woman <laughs> bitching all day. Uh, oh, here's... Uh, here. This is where... You want an Ooh. AR on your ass? Continue. <laughs> Jimmy gets them all. <laughs> oh I'm going to call MR. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> keeps, keeps us out of the jam. <laughs> Nobody is asking you to embrace their expression of love. But don't you as human beings have to embrace that love? The world is barren enough. It is stacked is he, against... Is he breaking this, up a little yes, bit? Yes, that's what I'm saying. His voice. He's such a oh, nerd, The world's guy. barren enough. He's such a nerd. He sucks. Half of them just want to get married for the health insurance so they yeah, can take yeah. care of their fucking partner. It's something yep. about love. Yeah. They're going to get AIDS eventually, <laughs> so they need some fucking insurance. Just in case you get a dose of that. Yeah, they yeah just, you're uh, going to need the insurance for the cocktail. The, they want the benefits. Yeah, the fucking How colon. ironic that is. <laughs> the colon shredded apart, and they need to go to a doctor. That's it why they're you. doing it. It gets you sick and saves you. <laughs> Fuel cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> The world is barren enough. It is stacked against love and against hope and against those very few and precious emotions that enable us, all of us, to go forward. Your I, marriage. Can I, can you I please? hate this guy. I am embarrassed for this guy. Yeah. yeah. You are a fucking embarrassing, fat-headed man. No, isn't this the same guy that was all these interns? He was screwing or some shit. Like all these girls were saying, he was having these one-night stands and just Whoa. blew them off. Wow. Really? He really? Oh, but he's supposed to be in love. This is what Jim isn't... Florentine is saying. I, I have no, I have no idea, idea, Jim Florentine. What are you saying? What are you? What allegations are you no, making? The Baron of Love out there. It's so against <laughs> us. I just hope. I have no idea. At some point. Yeah. Uh, a phone message comes out where this guy's just dropping n bombs like crazy, right. yeah. calling yeah. Uh, you know, saying fag and everything, whatever, just something. This guy is too coming off like this. It's too much. He's covering up something because people people don't fucking talk like it. people don't give a fuck. He's I don't care if Proposition Eight allows uh, gay people to get married or not. It. Uh, would I want him to? Sure, why not? If they aren't able to, am I going to care? No, no, I don't give a shit. Either way, I don't care. You don't need someone calling BR. I mean, the... Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no. No, we don't. Uh, um, I, I, I think that was over... <laughs> I better watch what I say. Someone will call NR. <laughs> I have fucking... Uh, he's, um... <laughs> He's wallowing in emotionalism, which is what's annoying me. Yeah. It's like, I'm for, I think Prop 8, I think they should be allowed to get married. I mean, I really do. Gives I, a shit. I, yeah, yeah, let them get whatever. married. You want to get married, have benefits, good. I mean, they, they got to pay the same taxes, 
as individuals. You, you fucking tax them for their yeah. work. And uh, they have the same penalties of criminal. You know what I mean? It's like I don't gonna... know if it's going to hurt me at all. No, nah, it won't. And it's going to affect my pocketbook. <laughs> Got you by the purse strings. You sure do. <laughs> you don't want to fuck up and have someone call CR. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Your marriage only stands a 50-50 chance of lasting. Yeah. No matter how much you feel <laughs> and how hard you work. Yeah. And here are people overjoyed at the prospect of just that chance yeah. and that work just for the hope yeah. of having hope. that feeling. Yeah. It's not the feeling of fucking marriage, dummy. Oh. It's the feeling you get when you're fucking just with somebody you care about and you're shoving your dick in them. Right in that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Fabulous. Fucking uh, yes, just that feeling. They want to just on Christmas morning be able to give a pink sock to the one they love. <laughs> Hanging pink stockings by the fireplace. <laughs> you want to pull your penis out and have S get holding onto it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like you're fucking a sea urchin. <laughs> Oh, this guy well, is just so fucking full of himself. Wait exactly. till you hear this last 30 seconds. They, oh, they want what we all want, to wipe shit off our dicks with one of our his and his towels. <laughs> his and him. him. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> listen, for, listen for it. All you need to do is stand and let the tiny ember of love meet its own fate. You don't have to help it. You don't have to applaud it. You think he practiced oh. that in his head? Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, he ran through this in front of a fucking mirror. mirror. Yep. Oh, I'm going to come ember. up with. Yeah. I'm going to come up with the ember of love. Ember of love. And my voice will tremble. He's trying ember so hard to be moving. He does this yeah, all yeah. the fucking time. He's trying to get people to just stare at the TV, captivated and, yeah. and hanging on his every word. And uh, eh, no. Mm. Someone tell him if you, that, we're, that if you, if you know him that uh, you saw last night's episode. And he is a he's a glad baggie of jizz. <laughs> he's a fucking Ziploc bag of jizz, <laughs> just full. He, he he's a baggie that's so full of jizz, you, you ziplocked it and jizz leaked all over your fingers. <laughs> what a fucking asshole! <laughs> all you need to do is stand and let the tiny ember of love meet its own fate. You don't have to help it. You don't have to applaud it. You don't have to fight for it. Just yeah. don't put it out. Yeah. Just don't extinguish it. Because while it may at first look like that love is between two people you don't know and you don't understand and maybe you don't even want to know, that love is in fact the ember of your love for your fellow person. Just because this is the only world we have and the other guy counts too. Yeah. If the other guy counts too. I mean, the other two guys count. Yeah, yeah, they count, <laughs> count T cells. <laughs> <laughs> two. <laughs> oh fuck! What? A, oh, oh fuck. Fuck. it's just like I don't even want to hold this. It's oh, embarrassing. That, that yeah. wavering in his voice, that whole thing. That, oh, and even if it's people, you don't, yes. you don't know. But he practices. Like that. His emotions yeah. got to come out. That wasn't Stop natural. It. He practices no, he, uh, that, he that delivery, that vo yeah. voice. He ought to talk the that way about, about free speech and how it only applies to certain people. And if you're a radio DJ and you make a tasteless joke, you should be fired. And I'll suck oh. Jesse Jackson's dick with you. <laughs> I'll put it right in my mouth. Did he make your book, Jimmy? Keith Oberman? Yeah. Fucking eight pages on him. Seriously? Oh, nice. I smashed that. I can't wait sucker. to get to that part. <laughs> yeah, it's called Asshole Keith Oberman. That's the Really? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I attack him for his fucking... Oh, you rule. His dog shit on Imus, his yeah. fucking... He's throwing David Schuster to the wolves. Yeah, I attack Your Steve him. Martin chapter was oh. really good, too. Thank you. Really good. Yeah, he had to be fucking beaten for that shitty... Peter Sellers oh, move. Oh, fucking what a scumbag move. Big I can't time. believe no one's attacking Steve Martin for fucking stealing the Pink Panther and oh. sucking. We well, made the great point of, like, imagine a guy all of a sudden starts doing comedy in white suits and with the arrow in the head. He would be outraged. Yeah, he it was like, his fucking Woody. mind. You, I, yeah, I pointed out, I'm like, you wouldn't, like, because Steve Martin's like, I just wanted to see what I could bring to the role. It's like, you fucking asshole. If someone was running around with a white suit and an arrow through your head, you wouldn't be going, hey, what a great tribute to me. You'd be going, that guy's stealing my shit. And you'd be right. He would be stealing your shit. In a very feminine fashion, he would say that. Yes, he would, with his little thin mustache. Yes. The hamburger. The hamburger. How can you be a French accent for that long and not be funny? <laughs> it was mind-boggling how they avoided anything that could have been humorous. Yeah. I couldn't believe. 
that humor was avoided so successfully in that movie. It was fucking horrible. But they had B B uh, Beyonce or whatever in there. So. Oh, yeah. She's sassy. She gets the she's sexy good. and the black. And I, I, didn't, I don't hate Beyonce. She's just an irrelevant... Uh, mm. Whatever. She's the hot chick mm -hmm. in the movie. I hate him for stealing the fucking role from Sellers. Yeah. He fucking... He really... He, he stole a fucking role and ruined it. It's a sickening, sickening thing. Same thing with the out-of-towners. Did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ruined Jack oh. Lemmon's performance, he's which fucking, is brilliant. He's terrible. And, and he used to be great. The Jerk, all these funny movies. I it's forgot like, he did the out-of-towners. Holy yeah. shit, good one, Doc. With Goldie Hawn. The father yep. of the Bride. It's mm. like, you fucking smug asshole. You are able to refuse roles. Why are you taking fucking shit that's been done before? Create something original. It's fucking annoying. So, Jim, what happens when he comes to the comedy cellar next week? He wants to start doing stand-up again. You'll be like, Steve, can I get a picture? Just one, yeah, please. Yeah, you'll have your little card out. Yeah. Can you sign this, yeah, I know. Can you sign this yeah. business card? I got, and you'll go home, get it friggin' copied at Kinko's. Can you sign it now? <laughs> Not only will I do that. Yeah, are they going to do another happen. Father of the Bride? Oh, fuck yeah. I'll bring a copy of the Pink Panther and say, dude, just what a home run. Can you sign this? <laughs> No one said that I'm not an inconsistent fight in a diaper full of shit. <laughs> the best about your book, you, you just destroy Al Sharpton, and at the end of the chapter is a picture of Jimmy and Al Sharpton. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But the captions under your pictures, you know, you're not, uh, you're not faking anything. No, not you at all. You admit to a lot of stuff. I got a picture with the guy... Uh, uh, um, who stabbed them? Who stabbed them? Yeah, he's, he's a, a big ONA fan. Yeah, and, I've uh, seen him. He's got a few appearances. Fucking thick meat hooks. I have a good photo of us. He came to the uh, gig we did the fucking uh, animation festival. Mm -hmm. Mike, his name is, and he was in the back. He's a nice dude. He fucked up, and you know, whatever he did his time in jail, and he's, he's like a normal dude. Um, and now uh, we got a picture, and, and uh, he's got he's holding a copy of Happy Endings. I'm so happy. Yeah. Fucking hey, great they're, taste. They're That's already, an angry gentleman. They're already he was. Yeah. They're already <laughs> previewing Pink Panther too. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the first one was so bad. It was so fucking bad. It's like, dude, you were one of the biggest stand-ups ever. How do, you, how do you not know what fucking garbage that movie is? I saw some kind of trailer in the movie theater, and it was um, him as, you know, Inspector Clouseau. Just fabulous, wonderful. And it was a uh, turn your cell phone off kind of an announcement. Oh. It it was cringe inducing. Where I I had slumped down in my seat. <laughs> it was so bad. Were you embarrassed? I I couldn't look at the huge screen in front of me. It was that bad. And I I was like, if one person I hear a chuckle out of one person, I'm caving their head in. I'm just going over with my boot and caving their <laughs> fucking skull in. Because there's nothing worse in the movies when you see something awful and then somebody goes, oh, I want to see that. You just want to go, who is the idiot that said that? Who is the idiot that said that? Did anyone laugh? No. There wasn't even a chuckle. Was it supposed to be funny? Yeah. I guess. Please, oh, can we supposed find to be that? Great. Can we have that? I would, I would Might be online. Oh, it's got to be hysterical. I have, can we get him doing Pink Panther voice? It's so fucking bad. He's doing the wild and crazy guy voice, pretty much, from oh, uh, SNL. With a little French. I am in the Clouseau. You fucking <laughs> Dink. <laughs> uh, Webex.com. We're heading toward line of the day. Webex. What's that about, Ant? You hold meetings online or whatever? So oh, even? yeah. Why go anywhere? I would love to use this uh, with our uh, meetings that we hold with uh, our executives and no, our harass. We already told them no more meetings. Well, with Webex, it would be easy because all I would do is um, make a proper mock-up of me, yeah. cardboard, and I'd put my mouth on some kind of a motor, mm -hmm. so it would go, nah, 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 nah. It'd make it look like I'm talking. Because the one guy doesn't listen anyway, so that's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, because he doesn't listen. Perfect. And then I would just put myself in front of my uh, webcam, Yeah. and they'd be like, wow, that Anthony uh, had some good input. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be saying anything. Yeah, let's get a headline uh, going. Uh, Opie and Anthony refuse to do any more meetings. Uh, Only on but, WebEx. But we guarantee we will we will give you the best show possible every day. That's it. Don't need to know any, anything else. And, All right. and I'm if, in. And if there is some... No, no meetings. This WebEx is for everybody else, not us. Sounds what, great for what meetings. What if I want to go on WebEx? Oh, well, you could. You could maybe jump into an Apple meeting or something. Ooh. A Microsoft meeting. I what don't if know. you could use it for other things besides business? Of course you can. I'm not saying anything. I'm just wondering. What do you think? What do we got? If they got good enough quality to uh, hold a meeting. 
Of course you can. be able to have a meeting. I don't think WebEx wants us to go, look, you want to see Snatch, WebEx.com is the place to go. Let's thro <laughs> throw some they, WebEx. <laughs> I think they just assume yeah. by getting the, the word out, video conferencing, yes. wink, wink, hold meetings, hold wink, me wink. Make, it says make presentations. <laughs> make hey, presentations. Hey, how about I present you with this? <laughs> oh, no, what did Jimmy blast one off? <laughs> No, of course. Florentine did. Yeah. It smells like, you know what it smells like? A fucking, uh, the inside of like a fucking, uh, an egg McMuffin wrapper. Oh, oh, uh, if I didn't know what it was, it would make me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out at WebEx.com. We got Jim Florentine playing comics here in New York, Friday and Saturday. C-O-M-I-X-N-Y dot com for info. We say you go see Jim Florentine. First time he's ever done our show. We've known him for like 10 years. Yeah. No, I Ridiculous. did it back. I did it a long time ago. Yeah. When yeah. the, me and Jim came on, um, very early on. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Do we and have Don any... Jameson? These guys are doing the show with Eddie Trunk on VH1, the metal show. Saturday's eleven o'clock. Yep. And Jimmy's got a book signing in Staten Island, huh? Tomorrow night, seven o'clock. It's on Richmond uh, Avenue. Avenue, Barnes and Noble, two two four five. Thursday night in Rhode Island at six o'clock. Borders at the Borders. I don't know which Borders it Providence is. Providence Place. Thank you all. And uh, <laughs> January 16th, 17th, the Borgata in AC. Last year, those dates sold out very quickly, so. Nice. I don't know where I'm at with tickets. I have to check today. Well, the economy's weird, Jimmy. Um, yeah, but I think the shows will sell. I always do very well in AC. See a lot of money to go there. They buy sacrifice food to go see Jimmy. It's worth it. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Do we have any clip, clips yes. of the Pink Panther? We'll try to find those okay. next. All right.